I'm just like anybody else. I now present to you, Jeff. Jeffrey. For this, I'm Jeffrey. Okay, then I present to you Jeffrey Dahmer in his command performance. I'll give you a 150 bucks if you post or some pictures. Run that by me again? $150 to take my picture? Yeah. $150. Right. Cool. I'm Jeff. Everyone knows his name. It's my goddamn box! I want to see what's inside of it! And I won't report you this time, but if I come across and fool you again, I'm gonna follow you in. You don't have to worry about that, sir. We're gonna behave ourselves. His friends thought he was friendly. Your grandmother says that you have a mannequin or something in your closet. Behind the legend lies the truth of Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm a pervert, an exhibitionist, a masturbator, and a killer. He convinced everyone he met he was safe. What's in those bags? Clippings from the garden. Jeffrey Dahmer was a stalking nightmare. Boy, this bit's strong. What you put in this stuff? I like bones. I'm interested in what's inside. God, Dahmer, you are such a freak! I wish I had a best friend. Jeff's a little off, though. Dahmer. Yes, yes, y'all, it's going down right now. Episode 254 of the Triple Shots of Moods and Horror Podcast is coming at you live and direct with the homie, JP, also known as The Mexicant. Mr. Saucedo, also known as Tyler. And I be your host, the M-O-O-D to the Z. Moods, yeah. What's going on, homies? Yeah. Yo. Yo. Chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Serial Killers, Volume 1. Ew. I mean, I feel like it was just we had to do Dahmer to start out. Right? Volume two. What are you talking about? Or volume two. This is the second <laughs> one, right? What, what did we do for the first one? Henry. Oh, right. Uh, I completely fucking forgot about that shit. Right. Henry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But right. that's when I <laughs> that's when I found out that there was a sequel to Henry. <laughs> oh my god. I completely forgot about that. Oh my god, that sequel. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, so we had to dip into uh into the Dahmer territory. Um Jeffrey Dahmer was always he was a person I was like infatuated with when I was younger because you know, the time that he was arrested and stuff, I was what was he arrested in ninety two? I think in ninety three. Uh, ninety thought it was ninety uh one. No, yeah. he was he was arrested in ninety three, I think. Um no, because this I think, movie I think came died. out in 93. Yeah, no, I think he, he died in 92. No, he, no, he died in 94. Oh. Th- this movie was out, and he was still in jail, and he died in 1994. He was arrested in 1993. Um, because most of, no. most of the murders, yes, most of the murders that he committed were between 1990 and 1992, right? He did die in 94. You are right about that. And most murders between 78 and 91. So he committed between 78 and 88. There was four. And then the 13 other murders were all between 1990 and 1992. Yeah, when he like lost it. Yeah, he went hard. Well, that's he, he, was set, like, yeah, at, he was sentenced on February 17th, 1992. So he probably did get arrested. He got arrested July 22nd, 1991, as I said. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So, you, so okay. So he was arrested. Okay. Yeah. It's still yeah because it's it pretty- would have been like, I was already impressive that the first movie came out just two years after he's arrested. If, he, if it had came out the same year, that would have been insane. You know, the crazy thing is about that, like he got arrested in mid 1991 and he committed 13 murders between like 90 and like half of 91. Like, yeah, bro, that's, bro, he was, just bro getting, was, he was, he was on hard, a fucking bro. pace, man. Like he was cooking. It's fucking <laughs> bad. Shit. It's so crazy how you can like commit one. And then I think it was like, what, seven years later between the be before he committed another one. And, the, and then he committed like, you know, three more in that like short little period. 
so overall, I think he actually ended up killing four people at his grandma's house before he ended up getting kicked out of there. And then that's when he just went on a fucking rampage in his apartment. But like, that is just so crazy. Like, and it's so unusual for, for someone to kill somebody and then do, you know, like seven years between killings and shit. It's very rare. So this story is always, been, it's very fascinating to me. I, I read his biography when it came out, I believe in 93, I think it came out. It was like right after, like he was still in jail. He was still alive. I think at the time. Or maybe it was just shortly after he died. I can't remember, but it was such an interesting read, dude. I was just like, I, I got to know everything about Dahmer. He was just, it was so intriguing. So, yeah, I remember being in high school and doing like a report on Jeffrey Dahmer and getting some weird looks yeah. because <laughs> um, I was like obsessed with serial killers when I was in high school. Like, I was just so fascinated in like, I, I, I think Jeffrey Dahmer was like the first one I learned about like and actually like read like into his story and stuff mm -hmm. and then yeah. i just got obsessed and i went into gacy and ed gain and um you know henry uh, it's just it, it was super fascinating to just sort of like learn about them and the more twisted the more interesting they were to me because i'm like how do you do that you know what i mean how like and jeffrey dahmer to me was always the like the the most interesting most like notorious one because of the fact that you know it he um kept the bodies around a lot of times he was trying to make zombies <laughs> he uh yeah. you know tried eating them like it was just you know was interesting and, and it's cool um, too because like even I, like i even remember reading the biography and and it going into detail about like why he was doing these things right like, I mean, it explains in these movies too, like why he was eating them and why he was keeping body parts around and stuff. And it was literally because he wanted them to be a part of him, right? Yeah, he didn't he want wanted... people to go away. Like, that's why he ended up killing people because, you know, he knew that at the end of the night, after their date and after their romp section, that they were going to leave and he didn't want that. You know, he was driven by that, by the fact that he never wanted to be alone. And it's just so intriguing. I remember reading that going, holy fuck, like... And like the fact that he had a conscience, like he knew what he was doing was wrong. It's like the polar opposite of Bundy. Bundy was a total sociopathic killer mm -hmm. that could fucking stab your eyes out, fuck your, fuck the holes in your head, you know, and then come back and then fuck you a week later. Like he didn't care. Like he was, he was insane. Like he was literally a psycho, like a psychopath. Dahmer was different though, man, because like he had a conscience, he knew it was wrong. And he, like, he had all these really specific reasons. Like he wanted to make them zombies because he wanted them to be around him. He wanted to control it and it's just yeah he didn't want to um like lose the companionship that yeah, he got out of that's all he people. wanted he killed because he just didn't want people to leave him and shit and it's it, it his reasonings is so different than a lot of other famous serial killers like dahmer or i mean uh, bundy wasn't like bundy just he he was a fucking you know he, he was, was like mainly like a sex fiend he, like he was a psychosexual like in a sense yeah. like he would fucking you know he was so sick though dude like he would fucking rape and murder women and dump them in like in a, in a bush and come back a week later and fuck their dead bodies and shit. Like that, like that's some crazy ass shit. See, Dahmer wasn't like, like once he killed, he knew he had to get rid of the body. Like he had a conscience about that, but then he'd keep certain parts and stuff because you know, then they're a part of him forever and shit. Like a lot of serial killers don't do that shit. They dump bodies and move on. Right. Like he, he uses his mind state was so different to me. That's why I always found him so intriguing. And Bundy was very intriguing too. And I'm actually kind of glad that like, you know, in the last bunch of years, you know, the, the popularity, and serial killers just kind of came back into the mainstream and stuff and they've done like you know they did the dahmer uh netflix series and stuff which was called monster was it called monster, I think monster it was. Yeah. um i can't remember what that one was i know they did they did two ted bundy ones they did the the documentary and then they did the actual like movie yeah yeah uh, the, uh, the dahmer thing. the dahmer uh series the netflix series was incredible like the guy that played dahmer in that was it was freaky man his mannerisms, everything about him was so fucking good. I man. actually never watched that, which it's really good. It's like really good. Kind of a there's all, on my part. Yeah, it's really good. And it's very, yeah, very close like to it. the real story, except for we'll get into one part. And I think they depict it the best in the very first movie that we're going to that we're going going to uh, review. It's a quick little thing. It's almost super mean spirited and stuff. But the way they depict this relationship um in the uh netflix series is actually the family even came out and said this fuck it was all bullshit and like pretty much they're like yeah like 95 percent of this movie is pretty spot on for what the story actually was except for this relationship he had with the uh with the uh the deaf um black man so they were saying that that shit was just all fictitious and like he the night that he went missing is the night that he died kind of thing and 
blah 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 but um the, do you guys remember the death scene in the first film <laughs> with the deaf guy it's so fucking mean-spirited man but anyways um but they they say that's more exactly what it was he was kind of picked up and then murdered the same night kind of thing but anyways we'll get yeah, into ne that netflix shit. went like hard on those um serial yeah. killer things they did a gacy one they did a mm -hmm. bundy one they did a ramirez one and a Dahmer one well they, they went crazy sell. with the bundy oh no they did um yeah, the Henry thing, the the confessions was that was the, yeah. Well, they did they did two Henry or no, they did one two Bundys. Yeah, the, two Bundys. The Henry one was like the documentary. Yeah, the documentary, which was really it was good. It was really good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a lot actually when you really break it down to uh, oh, and they also did the um the Night Stalker too. Yeah, I said him Ramirez. Did, yeah, Ramirez. Didn't they yeah. do um See, talking about show Night Hunters a few years or, or Mind Hunters a few years ago? Yeah, that was that someone too. else. Right. Yeah, I remember I did, that. Yeah, that was them. I didn't watch that though. Uh, I remember that was just really that. popular, and it referenced a lot of real life serial killers. So like, was that like Fincher or train. something? I think he had a part of it. I really don't know. I watched like one episode. I don't know what's uh, that, what that one is. I got to go back and check. That's crazy. Hmm. I thought it was Netflix, but like, I'm not even like. Oh, okay. No, it is, it's definitely okay. Netflix. It was Netflix. Okay, because I'm pretty sure I watched. Like, I watch all this true crime shit. Like, I watch every type of dog. I think that's more of like a fictitious. It show, is. Though, right? It is. But they like it was. It's like fiction crime. It's like fi it's like not. You know what I mean? Like they use yeah. like real people and stuff. So right. It was right. really popular, so they probably like. I it's like a drama like, side dramatization. Yeah. And so I yeah. wonder if that kind of like just kickstarted like the interest. No, the the that came out after some mm. of these oh okay. the, the, I, I, what really causes them to keep making them is they're just very popular yeah. like i walked into my sister's house one time and she she's like she's like you ever hear this jeffrey dahmer guy i was like yes <laughs> she was watching the the just dahmer thing she's like it's yeah. crazy yeah, i was we like you never heard of jeffrey freaking dahmer dude <laughs> yeah i always thought it was such a shame that you know the police kind of set up that fucking murder and stuff in the jail and because like it would have been very intriguing to see a lot more interviews with Dahmer because he only did what he was open to doing well that's he wanted to talk about it because he wanted like he wasn't trying he he was different like you know with some serial killers where so they wait, the cops set that up that's that's the theory that's the theory wow. because what I mean he would have got got eventually anyway I well mean, what happened like the way he gets killed in real life in the in the jail like the only reason why those prisoners were in that section at that time is because some of the uh the CEOs let them in there yeah. right What's so there was a, they shouldn't have been in there at the time and everyone knows that and it's just the way it is in the system yeah, and stuff and I, it, he it was definitely all, would have been in PC but it's so crazy to me because like I think he only did one or two interviews you know before his demise which is kind yeah. of a shame because I would have loved to have heard more of his insight because he was he was very open that's why you know the you know the when the book came out and stuff it was like from his mind you know it was crazy so it would yeah, have been very like interesting he, to hear he, a lot more he from knew him. that he had a compulsion yeah. he knew that he was like that prison was the best place for him yeah it was kind of it was very different well, he openly was, like, admitted ted bundy was like like basically like trying to get out of it the entire time it yeah. was like yeah. Yeah, he was like pissed that he was getting executed he thought he was going to be able to get out of it well he was he was a fucking narcissist dude he, he right. was like he, he had himself convinced he didn't do anything wrong like it's fucking crazy <laughs> but like Dahmer like it's just such an interesting fucking mind right like total conscience and like just everything it would have been so interesting to see more interviews and just things out of his mouth and stuff because we got yeah. would have got probably more of the stories you know like eventually well, we'll yeah it's also out. Like, I remember people ask me, like, why I'm even, like, fascinated that it's, like, weird, like, creepy or whatever. Because well, it's, it's so like, rare. Dude, but also, you, like, like learning about this stuff helps you understand the psychology and possibly prevent That's future instances. exactly of why I would have loved to have seen more stuff, because then you really kind of study somebody like that and shit. And because you take somebody like Bundy versus Dahmer, and they're polar opposites, but they were doing the same bad shit. You know what I mean? But it yeah. was, like, totally different motivations. And... And like Dahmer's depiction is 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 really like kind of the stereotypical result of like why there is you know there's other serial killers would have very similar backgrounds about how yeah. they come from broken houses and stuff and you know they started out a little bit insane like they were fascinated with biologies and what was inside of animals and killing the small animals but a lot of it you know stems from family and home life where mm -hmm. you know you have this you once had a, a a house a loving house and then it wasn't there anymore it was broken and then it really defeats your mentality and. And, and you can just see it in, in the, all these depictions of how, like, he, like, once, you know, his dad moves out when he's on that trip and stuff, and and then his mom just packs up and then he's by himself. Like, that's, he loses it, dude. Like, he he's all by himself now. 
right? Yeah. And like those are the type of things that just can ruin people's mentalities and set you over the edge. And I think it's done pretty well in that aspect. But um, but yeah, yeah like even like like some of them, like I think to be fair, like honest, like John Wayne Gacy to me is like the the sickest like one that I is just I like just hate that dude. <laughs> he was a sick um, fuck. He's like Dahmer the is like too. More, like Dahmer is more like I can understand him a little bit more, right, right? Than like Gacy, who's just like a piece of shit. You know, what I, mean? I mean, let's be fair; they are all kind of piece of shit. Yeah, but, yeah. relatively um, speaking, like Dahmer, like I can understand the psychology of him a little bit more. Same thing with like like Eileen Warnos, right? Like she, I can understand like well, know, her motivation hearing are- her her yeah. life story and being like molested and and all the stuff that happened to her and then the prostitution and Abusing. being like raped yeah. and stuff yeah. Yeah. so that's makes a little bit more sense but like gacy was just disgusting no it, it was like the btk killer he was kind of the same thing you know like the btk killer was one of those dudes that lived in your he was your neighbor like he was a fucking he was a christian of course he was Mm-hmm. um you know he like he was very high up in the church and stuff he was a he was a family man he had a wife he had a bunch of kids he you know he you know he volunteered like he was just that everyday fucking all-american you know mm-hmm. he fucking did the most brutal shit to people in his spare time like that shit is fucking so scary to me that you could be living mm-hmm. next door to some guy who's just like you know your everyday guy hey johnny how's it going and he's downstairs and he's torturing and raping and murdering people and like what the fuck that's like, like uh that his so case always reminded me. me of the Claude Clovich killer movie. Remember yeah. That yeah. Movie? yeah. 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 Good BTK movie. was yeah, just a vicious piece of fucking but and crazy thing about him too is that like he got away with it for like 40 years or some shit too. Like Yeah, he only know? got caught because he was a boomer and it was like, Oh, if I send you this file, like will you yeah. be able to track me? And we're like, No. Yeah, <laughs> like it, it's just it's pretty wild, man. It's it's scary as shit, but these people exist out there and yeah. You, know, you don't actually hear about as many serial killers nowadays. I mean, there's got to be so easy to get caught nowadays. I, th- I, mean, I think the, that I think the that's the product of it too. BTK was a minister too, right? We just we just had a guy that get got caught that was a, that killed a bunch of people. I forget his name, mm-hmm. but this happened like in the last year or so. That I think he has a couple murders tied to him, like somewhere in a, a beach or something. I forget what they're calling him, but. Yeah, yeah no, it, I mean, the, the heyday of the serial killer era of the, so you know, 70s I, and 80s. I always, you know, I always think about it. And like, I know that sounds so strange to some people, but I, I think about weird shit sometimes. And I'm like, and I was thinking about it while I was prepping for the show, too. And I'm like, man, what the fuck was it? Like, what do you think it was? Like, there were serial killers going back to, like, you know, say, like, Jack the Ripper kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. But, you know, they were so far in between. There was, like, one here and there, like, a big one and stuff like that. But then there was like this major boom in like starting like maybe in the later sixties. And then, but the seventies, it was like this massive boom of in fluctuation of like serial killers in the seventies, eighties and nineties and stuff like that. Why do you think all of a sudden there was so many prevalent? I, th- I, I there- actually have a theory that, that there wasn't more. They're just ha- now have the technology to catch them more often. That's yeah. exactly what I was going to say. Well, I mean, but I, but I actually looked into it. I actually looked into it because, like, you know, you know, the story of like the town, the dreaded sundown, like that guy that mm-hmm. they don't really know who the fuck they never that got was. that guy never got caught. So he never got caught. But like, you know, that was taking place in the 40s and stuff. And I was actually looking into it and they didn't really have too many. A- well, they didn't use the term serial killer at the time, like like mass murder, whatever the whatever the term they used to use back right. in the day. They, I So I looked into it a, like a long time ago. And there, they weren't that many tracked, like mass murders at the time, like in the forties and fifties and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm not sure if it was just because they didn't have the technology or they just couldn't put the pieces they together. They probably weren't linking the cases. Well, that's, yeah, that's the thing. Like the because sophistication we, to track like someone's yeah. like tendencies. Like when because, like you, the you're talking about a time where there were literally no computers. Like how do you even communicate with different? Well, yeah, there was no know, print. Like there was so many. There's so stuff. many basic uh, elements of crime now that you know, kind of didn't really exist in those times. And like, yeah. they just didn't put the pieces and there, there, there probably was those serial killers out there. They just weren't linking the MOs. you know, like this Bro, person was th- killed. They've this gotten way. so like amazing at, at like forensics that like they can like d- match dirt from certain places. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? Oh, hundred percent. hundred percent. They're catching 100%. people like that committed crimes, like 50, 60 years ago, like oh, yeah. just because they just didn't. I know they actually just, do it. they just caught a dude. He was like in his late seventies or something. He committed a murder like 50 something years ago and they just caught him. Well, like, oh, like, we can match DNA, this like, dirt DNA, now. Gotcha. Like, just, 
forensics and just other evidence and stuff. They just put everything together and like all of a sudden this guy's like in the twilight years of his, yeah, usually, know, his life. And- usually the only time they don't fucking catch the people now is if they just did a really bad job with investigating the crime scene yeah like just like like literally like which is um, which is super common like in like smaller basically. smaller kind of towns and small yeah. town share it like that type of shit they don't take it as serious so like when some major thing happens it's, it, it is true like i watch a ton of dateline and like a lot of these cases will take place in these smaller towns and the, you know all of a sudden the case goes cold and then you know you got these investigators they're looking into it and going well fuck man this crime scene was compromised from the beginning they never you know yeah. or they had the tunnel vision they're like oh well it has to be this person so they only try to investigate this person meanwhile they're not looking at the other options that there probably is there and then the case goes cold and it's just a bunch of dummies and you got to bring in like you know these extra pis and like you all ba- these other basically what usually happens is somebody retires and someone new comes in and starts looking at cold cases and well that's exactly that's what happens when, that's when they like break yeah. you know long cold cases just like that last one that one one of the newer uh netflix or um true crimes things same same the, type of thing fucking happened to killer stalker thing yeah with the yeah. with the lady investigator that broke the whole thing open like the, the, these cops weren't putting the they weren't linking all these these cases and stuff and then like it was so fucking bizarre that they thought that this this girl was lying about being abducted and raped and all this type of shit. And like, they were going to charge her and stuff. It was fucking crazy story, dude. It was just batshit insane. And then, then this lady, like no one was taking it serious. They all thought that the, this boyfriend and girlfriend set this whole thing up and they weren't actually abducted, blah, blah, blah. And this and that, and like never took it serious. And it took all these t- years and this lady, oh, stepped I'm, up I know she, that case, I know she, this lady about. stepped up and then she, she linked another case to um to the the other one and it it just blew the everything open and it's like it just takes these people you know to look into it and do it properly right instead of having the fucking tunnel vision and yeah it's pretty it's pretty wild man I, i'm obsessed with true crime like i i oh, report dude, I, every week it's okay. actually like super sick how much like forensic files and just oh. i watch youtubers who do you honestly do like youtubers have gotten so good at, there's like, so many sleuths yeah. storytelling i've like i that. listen to those on youtube sometimes too like just like, like people like cold cases getting solved and shit dude yeah it's it's awesome like well, one I of my love... favorite cases of like just normal people breaking shit open was uh um don't, don't kill cats with, or don't, don't fuck, fuck with, with don't fuck with cats yeah, yeah. Dude, that Luca story Magnata. that dude that, was like canadian fucking horrible. crazy dude that story and like and how they broke and like how they figured it out it's so fucking i would watch yeah. that again it was there's so actually it was so uh, cool. Um, there's a there's a new one on HBO called like Mostly Harmless or whatever, which I actually thought was pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's about this hiker that they found found dead out in the woods, and like basically like armchair sleuths like cracked the case. Yeah. But the documentary went from like finding out like who this guy was to just like how like messed up and like pathetic honestly a lot of these like armchair people are like <laughs> it, right. it, it, it was more of a commentary on on them than anything uh, but i didn't think guys. it was a very good documentary <laughs> yeah i can't i can't get enough of it man like i record dateline every week i growing up i watched every american justice i watched all those documentaries on everything like you know like even the menendez, menendez brothers I, i've seen everything on that i've seen all the fucking documentaries i've seen everything um dude i yeah, love true yeah, crime I, I mean, though Netflix and it's really the only reason why I even really kind of keep Netflix still too is because they they put out all these true crime documentaries and series and stuff I've and said like, for years fucking that, amazing the, the only thing that Netflix does that is interesting to me besides like, the occasional movie is their damn documentaries and true yeah it's crime the stuff. only thing that's worthy for like, myself on that, that Chris Watts one might be some of the best like documentary work I've ever seen yeah that uh the dude that killed his wife and and children uh because he was cheating and for some reason thought that that was easier than breaking up with his yeah, wife i haven't I, I don't think i've actually seen that one yet but <laughs> oh you've never seen dude it is absolutely amazing because the girl that he murdered his wife shanann she recorded so much of their life like she did vlogs like non-stop so there's all this oh, footage in right, there right 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 oh my god that story dude oh my yeah. god that one is fucking nuts dude you're yeah. right though it's it's almost eerie to watch because like their whole lives were documented for years. yes yeah, crazy. Like, yes I it, remember there's that so one much footage i, I forgot what like it was called insane right 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 oh yeah dude that's that's creepy man <laughs> it's crazy dude yeah totally yeah there's um, a lot of uh of course making a murder 
which was a really good one. But I'm gonna be honest, dude. I watched another documentary that came out from from that. Yep. About that, and I'm pretty sure he did that shit. Now, <laughs> you know what, man? I got confused on it too. For a while there, I was like, I don't think he did shit, and then. And then it was like, maybe he did. And then I was back to like, I don't know about this shit. And, but yeah, there was a little bit more shit that came. It's just the fact of like it, these, these things kind of happening again and shit. Like there's certain elements of the story. You're just like, what the fuck? Like, how yeah. the fuck yeah, does it, that it's happen? It's pretty again? weird. But like, there's a lot of like stuff that they never talked about in that Netflix case. Like, yeah. Um, the, the, well, who did we talk to? There was somebody left a comment on one of our shows one time and they actually live in the city where all that shit happened. And she knew locals and had, you know, different yeah. information and stuff. And I was like, holy fucking crazy. Well, She's like, yeah, the story is so much deeper than it's not being told. Like he had like Pretty sexual relationship with like his niece and shit like that, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's like stuff that they never even touched. I mean, on. you know, okay. That's, that's some fucking dark and disturbing and nasty shit right there, but it doesn't make you a killer. It just makes now. you, it, it makes you a fucking pedophile and a, and a, and a fucking, uh, that's disgusting. It's just yeah. gross. But you know, you're not necessarily a killer at that point, but there's right. something fucking wrong with there's you. a, there's a lot more to it too. That, that, uh, was, you know, kind right. of eye opening. Um, but yeah, no dude. I mean, I think Dahmer is the, the cool thing about this particular one is that there are, there's even, I think there's even a couple more Dahmer movies, but I think these three are actually like perfect because they're all kind of different. Yeah. Yeah. They're all told completely different. Obviously the, the first one from 93, the secret light, it, it kind of goes through, you know, the start to the end. Um, and where the Dahmer 2002 is told in present and past and flashbacks. And, you know, it's an interesting way to tell them the story. I don't think it would work for everybody, especially if you're new to the actual Dahmer story. You might be a little bit confused on what the fuck it, is going it, on. It more takes like uh, the sort of end of his run and then it, some it, the, flashbacks. It, it tells the start and it tells the end. That's all it tells. Yeah. It builds yeah. up and it tells the story of him building up to basically my friend Dahmer. Uh, throughout this film and kind of like how he gets caught and stuff like that. So it, it, it it's interesting. It doesn't really show a lot of like the actual carnage that he that he did between like 90 92 and stuff like that and this one it's more of like telling the beginning and end it's a very strange structure and then of course my friend Dahmer is um him as uh, in, in high school just it's it pretty much it, leads up to his first murder yeah it's pretty much yeah. his, his senior year in high school from the start of the year to like basically graduates and then that's what happens like it's right after he graduates I think and then that's when he um he kills the uh, the hitchhiker so but I mean, yeah, so different ways of telling the story um, and, and like three different types of like depictions of like Dahmer. And um, I mean, some of the story, some of the things are a little bit different in, in all three of them, too. And same with Eve, even incorporate Mon Monster also. Um, but that's what I like about seeing different uh, visions of a story, though, too. You kind of get different portrayals and different angles of it and stuff. And I think that's what we get here. It's pretty cool. There's also like a ton of Charlie Manson ones. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. which is so interesting because he didn't really he didn't kill anybody mm -hmm. technically but he had he's like one of the most like talked about and i actually find manson to be one of the more boring actually it's not actually a full-on true because there has been stories of and i'm not talking about like the la Bianca murders and stuff, like the actual carnage um what we know is helter skelter and shit like that but um so there there is stories that people have come out and told that were part of like you know the cult and stuff like that or were closely associated with other people that told stories about manson and stuff Th there was some murders on the farm right and some of the people from the cult have said that manson had a play in that so he took some people out and they they you know they were going to get punished or something, and then they just never came back and stuff so hmm. i don't know if he pulled the trigger or if there was yeah. someone else that pulled the trigger, but no one really, but there was yeah. people that disappeared on the farm that Charlie definitely wasn't, was like, not like he was off with them, you know, kind of thing. I feel like I've he was stories. like, I feel like he would just have somebody else do it. Like, I, I feel like he wasn't, right. yeah. well, he was like, a manipulator. He just doesn't seem like a, he, well, he was like he, killing people. He was, he was a manipulator. Like, he, he, he could totally fucking manipulate anybody into doing shit. Like he was great. Yeah. He was a great talker. That's what cult leaders, you can't be a leader without basically training a mind to do what you want it's what they do yeah and, and they cults basically train you fucking super another interesting <laughs> yeah. topic altogether yeah the, the, my manipulation like how people can just smooth talk their way into people's minds and mentalities and just get them to do shit is 
it's I, I've said this before on the show. I find it so incredibly fucking scary that someone can do that to you. Yeah. Like yeah, it's crazy. You think you're so especially strong, when you start seeing ones like the um Heaven's Gate cult, where right. like a lot of the people that were in that were like actually like successful, intelligent people. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I would it somebody who tricks like a Salesman, person man. who dropped out of like high school in like seventh or ninth grade or whatever, and has like no education tricking them is one thing, but when you're tricking, you know, manipulating and, and pulling in people that are actually yeah. like, who actually have a mind of their own, have a mind of their own. Well-adjusted people, not like yeah. loners. Right. Yeah. That's, that's where it's like really creepy to me. Which is interesting too, because like a lot of people on the, on the Charlie Manson farm, they were outsiders. They were people that were rejected yeah. from CIA. Oh, society. They were and all that was like burnt out hippie. Yeah. LSD they were all rejects. Fucking. They were all, yeah, they were all rejects of society. And, the, and then, then that's how they came together. And I mean, in that sense, it makes a lot more sense that Manson was, ba- was able to do what he did with these people because right. they were looking for a family. Literally they wanted to be you know, part of something. And, you know, you got someone telling you all this crazy ass shit and you're like, well, fuck man, maybe it's true. You know, there are, there are some good Manson movies though. The yeah, movie Helter Skelter, good. I think is my favorite one. That's a fucking TV movie, man. It's crazy. Yeah. I think that, I think that might have made my top 10 that year, whatever year that came it's out. It's good. 76. I think it wasn't, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah and it's, then, it's, um, it's good, man. Yeah. There's one called Charlie's girls. That's pretty good. Yeah. I think I've, I've heard of that one. I, I don't think I've seen it though. I think I've heard of it. It was like uh, a shout IFC release, right? Yeah, something, something like that. that. And then, um, oh, maybe, or, or no, Charlie says that one. Charlie says, yeah, yeah. And then there's, um, there's uh, obviously the the sort of fiction version, uh, Tarantino's um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is amazing. Dude, I gotta rewatch that movie that, so bad. Telling the, the way he tells that story is so crazy, <laughs> dude. I love it because it gives like Sharon Tate like the happy ending that she never got in real life. And right. I just, it like, yeah. it was pretty powerful to me. And, um, that girl who, who played her, uh, Margot Robbie. Yeah. She did such a good job in that role. Uh, right. When I saw that, I knew like nothing about like, quite like golden age 60s cinema or Hollywood. Oh really? Or they do such a good job. Yeah. With that and now film. I know a lot of it. So like all these references, like I didn't know any of it. Like, yeah. you, know, you know, it's actually kind of funny that you bring the, the Mance movies up to actually the next movie that we're supposed to be doing on that room or challenge actually is the Manson family from 97, the Jim Bam Bebber film. I know we need to get back on. <laughs> yeah, get back on those. Right? That, that's that's a great and brutal telling of the, the Manson story. It's crazy, but there's some really good features on that shit too. So um, if you actually have a copy of that, like to watch the features, I don't know cool. if I actually have that copy of that. I missed out on the Blu-ray, man, and that shit's like so long out of print. But I have that, I have the disc. But, but yeah, that's another one, the Manson family. It's probably probably one of the darker, and more brutal kind of depictions of the the story. It's pretty interesting. But it's been a while since I've seen it too. So, but we should get back to that, man. Got to do that shit. Yeah, I had fun. I was having fun with those. Yeah, man, they're just they're quick and easy to do. Yeah, so. and uh, obviously. Um, we now know our next top 10 show if you listen to that show oh right i guess we could probably fucking seven and a half hour <clears throat> mamma jam but i was compl- i called everything that happened on that show man like i said pre-game except for our number ones i yeah well fuck I, actually i did get one i got tyler's it was actually the yeah. first time i've ever actually got one but really nobody <laughs> did well on that but anyways but I said to the wife, Rihanna, I said, man, this is, I, I might even mention it to you guys too. I said, this is probably going to be one of the most unique years in terms of like unique films on lists and stuff. And I even said, I think I said to you pregame, I said, man, I think there's going to be one person on the show I don't have any in common with. And it, that actually <laughs> happened. Yeah. And it turns yeah, out like my list, that. I only had one in common with Ty, with Tyler. I only had one in common with JP and I think a two with Dave Z. And it was funny because I figured I might have two with Dave. And one of them actually wasn't the film I was thinking of. So it was, uh, and I don't think you guys had too many of the same either, right? We had two of the same, actually. Moods. Did we? We had two? We had, okay. We had Sleep Tight and uh, Guilty of Romance. Oh, right. I forgot about Sleep Tight. What did? You, how many did you guys have the same? Um, Probably two, I think. I, I had Sleep Tight and... Oh, uh, three. Three. Skin, Cabin, and Sleep Tight. Right. So, yeah, like, I mean, again... You know, I from figured years, Cabin was going to. I'm actually. Cabin. You didn't have skin, did you, Mids? No, no, no. I'm actually shocked at that. Yeah, I, I, I thought, thought you loved that movie. Yeah, I, I do. Thought actually, me and you were. But I thought I figured like Cabin was going to tie me to everyone except maybe Moose, but Skin would tie me to you. 
Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was in there for a long time. I, I can tell you, actually, I think like my 11, 12 and 13s, I think were all in my top 10 for a long time. So I also I a, find I it incredible that there were five different number ones. I actually, that that's happens? another thing I predicted too. I said, I, I've said most likely we're going to have all different number ones. And I was right about that too. So I'm pretty good at guessing random things, except for people's actual number ones. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. We're shit, man. I don't know what it is, but I was just kind of looking at this going, I'm thinking like Carly's going to have so many different types of films. And I was bang on on that. And I don't know. It was like Dave Z had a couple picks in his top 10. I did not see coming. Like one of them I didn't even see or watch. Um, so that was kind of a shock to me. Um, I, I was I actually kind of shocked that you had uh, Grave Encounters. I didn't oh, expect that. Yeah, yeah. No, I love Grave Grave Encounters. I got it's it's you know it's it's pretty interesting because like I I remember when we did the Grave Encounter films back in the day, and I didn't even know that that film was filmed in Vancouver. Like, um, I think that's where that hospital is. I was like, oh shit. Like we used to pass all that all, like all the time going to Maple Ridge and shit. And I was like, the fuck crazy. So it took me for a loop, but I, I think it's really fun. I think it's, it's actually technically kind of a really scary found footage film, but yeah, I, I like, fun. I like the narrative. I like what's happening in it. It's, it's pretty fictionalized, obviously. Like, I mean, it's so like out there and shit, but it's like, I think it's pretty cool for what it's doing. It's nasty. It, it, it's just, I don't know. It's scary. It's scary to me. I, I like shit in hospitals and I think it's pretty cool. So. Um, the only other time we had uh, that many different number ones was actually in 91. We had six different number ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's really surprising. But we did have a lot yeah. of the same films on our list, though, right? Yeah, I think yeah there was a lot of anyone. Yeah, a lot of common in common movies. But like 91, I had People Under the Stairs as my number one. Derek was Naked Lunch. Carly was Cape Fear. Dave Parker Naked was Lunch. Silence of the Lambs uh moods was the resurrected and jeremy was nothing but trouble didn't nobody get my number one and i even i've mentioned this over so many times even on the show i know even to you I how much i love that one. movie how much i love that movie i can't believe that like everyone didn't get that well, like i've always i've always championed that movie for years and years and years like i had the old german blu-ray before screen factory got the rights to release it here in, in the region one or region a and uh i, I always loved it i always loved the movie that was cool, but that, that was kind of a shock to me. So. Yeah, it's kind of always interesting to see, like, certain, like, for example, our next year, 1975, I feel like there's probably going to be one movie that hits a lot of the number ones. <laughs> I think I think there's one super, super heavy hitter from that year that, or I mean, there's two. I think there's three. I think well there's definitely yeah, there probably is three, but there's definitely two major heavy hitters. On oh, yeah, that. there's two obvious ones. Like I don't, I couldn't see either one of those. I don't know. I I, I guess it's gonna have to see. Maybe maybe one of those big ones won't even be on my list. <laughs> we had four different number ones for two thousand two as well. Yeah, I could also see everybody having the same number one in seventy five, but we'll see. Um, I doubt it because I think that there's two films that I I can see I some three. people like, having I one of them. With you. Like, I mean, I, I don't know why we're beating around the bush. I mean, if you, all people have to do is look up what films came out in 1975, <laughs> but everybody knows that Jaws came out in 1975. Right. Yeah. But, but the other big one for myself and, and a lot of genre fans is Argento's Deep Red. I agree. So I think that's another, that's another. <laughs> I, yeah, that, that, that I could movie. see, I could see a split in between those two films. Mm -hmm. I can tell you right now that Jaws is definitely the front runner for my number one. I'd be surprised if it didn't. End yeah, I, I was leaning towards a lot of people having that one, but I, I think that 75 might be a great example of what happens to me and JP on so many top 10 lists. Like it's say, per se, I'm not saying Deep Red is going to be my number one, but if he has it on his list, it's going to be number 10. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, to be fair, too, Deep Red is probably not, yeah. like the film that I, the Argento film that I think is most overrated. So, yeah, because I know you've never possible. been that hot on Deep Red. It's kind of like you but, like respect it, but you don't love it, right? I, there, I mean, every time, I mean, I've, I've seen Deep Red probably about four or five times now, and, and I do like the movie. Um, it just doesn't do it for me like a lot of his other films do. But again, you know, so rewatches can always change, especially if I'm watching it to be like, analytical and to see where it goes in my list it is pot i mean i've had films that i didn't expect to 
creep up. Like even uh, the skin I live in, like that ended up on my list and going in, I didn't think that it would, because although I yeah. think it's yeah. a great film, I, it didn't really ever like connect with me until this time watching it. Right. Um, but I also think that like in terms of 75, like just me looking at the list, I'm not like passionate about many of these movies. So it's well, kind of the- wide open for me in terms of like what actually makes my top 10. There's actually only like two films that I consider like films that I love that I, that I watch all the time. There, there is a lot, there is a lot of movies from, from 75 that I really, that I personally love. So it, it's an interesting year. Like I love race with the devil. I think that movie is fantastic. Like I'm a I've actually fan. never seen that. So I'm a huge fan of like the devil's reign. I've talked yeah. about that before. I've talked about how much, that. how much I love the Stepford wives, how much I love shivers. Never seen that. Um, like there's a lot <laughs> uh, of like, shivers. I do like a lot. That's a good one. Like I actually reviewed the killer of dolls on the podcast a long time ago. I think it was a Patreon pick or something like that, but that's a really good one. Um, but yeah, there, I was actually surprised that I've seen as many as I have for 75 because I have reviewed uh, a the lot last of time we got a 70s year. I think I had like six. I saw it like six or something. Yeah, I've reviewed a lot of these movies on the podcast actually over the years. Pretty crazy. Now I'm looking through them and stuff like I just rewatched The Killer Must Kill Again. It's fun when Psychic Killer, I think I talked about that one on the podcast. We've talked. I think didn't we review Sat- Satanical Pandemonium? Didn't we do that I one on exploitation remember. or something like that? Yeah, I we almost, did actually. I almost yeah. picked that one up too. Yeah, I forgot so about that. Mondo. Yeah, so we done that one. We just reviewed Footprints on the Moon, which me and Tyler were. We a lot just did Bug GD. not too long ago. I think we've we've reviewed Night Train Murders before. Yep. Like, there's so many movies. Eyeball, like, Eyeball, right? Lips so and Blood. We did. I'm pretty sure we did the Ilsa. She will. We did that trilogy. Yep. Um, you know, I think someone someone reviewed Trilogy of Terror on the show. I'm pretty sure. But I talked about like the House of Exorcism. Which is like the recut for the the Baba film, which is totally bizarre, bizarre with Telly Savalas and shit. That that movie is fucking bizarre. Yeah, I got that on Blu-ray. It's just yeah, it's yeah. such a different cut of the movie. It's fucking so crazy. The, like sometimes, like I was looking at some of the films I watched, and I'm like, oh yeah, I've watched Susan, uh, Sandra, Olga, and Julie. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I'm like, I for, I own that on Blu-ray actually. My Weird. nights with Susan, Sandra, Olga, and Julie. <laughs> weird who who put that out i think it was olive weird huh i didn't even know that movie had a release it's crazy i actually don't own that never seen it yeah um I, I remember being pretty decent but we did strip nude for your killer we've reviewed that one on the show i definitely think the uh, the italian films that are on there is probably like i could see a lot of those making my list there's a lot man like there's 75 i feel like of- this year has a ton of foreign films yeah, yeah it's it's like all foreign films pretty much like wolf guy that's a fun one it i just find it like so weird that we've never had a, a year in the seven eight or nine i know it, it's it's just nuts to me yeah it is weird. i can't wait to talk about sallow <laughs> i had and there's sallow yeah let's see oh my i went i had such a 180 watching that movie again oh my god how, how many people so do you think good. you're gonna have the rocky horror picture show I can't imagine myself liking it very much. It's uh, it, probably, I mean, it, probably it, at least one. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the music's great in the film. I'm not, you know, me. I'm not a huge musical person when it comes to musicals, but that one actually is really good. I'm not. I've a always, huge I've fan always of kind of avoided it. But there's some I like. But there's some I do like a lot. But they're not usually like the American type of musicals that I like personally like a lot. But something like it's hard for me to like ignore like the craftsmanship of a movie like the Rocky horror picture show. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I like some musicals. Like I love, I love cry baby, John waters, cry baby. Oh, see, I can't um, one. What? I can't stand it. It's Dude, like my it least favorite. So John waters movie, man, I swear. Have you guys seen the Lars von Trier musical? No. Oh, you guys got to see it. It's so good. It's like, um, 10 out, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. Poultry wow. Geist is one of my favorites. Oh, oh Poultry Geist yeah. is great. I love yeah, that. Uh, so obviously, great. like the Wizard of Oz and like Willy Wonka, yeah, are two great musicals. Um, what other ones do I like? I mean, that's probably that's most of them. <laughs> I'm not what a big the, musical guy. What were the ones uh, that we did on the musical episode? We I don't know. It. I didn't do that show. Oh yeah, that's right. It was Rocky Horror um cannibal the musical oh that's and, a good one i love that one too that one's a lot of fun and it was that other like german one or so, um the lure i think it was repo 
Did, all the, repo, oh, repo the genetic opera. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I remember Dave was like, he fucking hated the music, and I love the music in the film. So I had a musical on my like top twenty five of eighty. That one, Forbidden Zone. That was wild. Oh yeah, that movie's bad shit. That was like a baby Rocky Horror. It's actually funny. Um, the the like the day after we posted the show, um, I think VCI announced the four K of the giant spider invasion or somebody it wasn't it might cool. not have been vc yeah it i might never have been picked up that blu-ray that they put up. or something I, yeah i have the uh the dvd of it but i never grabbed yeah. that that blu-ray giant giant spider invasion is fun man it's a fun oh, movie there's i, lo- movie I cool. love movies like that yeah it's it's so it's like it's weird it's almost like a throwback but it like came out in 75 right it was like i'm uh, actually surprised there's uh well i guess it makes sense um but there's not that many killer animal movies but I guess it would have been post Jaws where we started getting a ton more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Jaws ripoffs came pretty quickly after. The Return of the Exorcist. What the fuck is that? There's a few um, Paul Nashie movies this year, too. It's crazy. Tons of Italian stuff, though. Oh yeah, I'm actually looking forward to to doing a lot of to prepping for this. I don't I don't think there's uh, a overabundance of. Uh, like films to watch no it's not versus crazy. like 2011 obviously there was i mean i could have kept watching I, I watched like 70 and i could have probably did a hundred good ones yeah <laughs> yeah it was um, probably i could have easily hit a hundred if yeah me too. i think i'm gonna shoot for like 75 for 75 that's what i'm going for i think availability is the only thing that would like slow me down really yeah i mean yeah. I, list, I have like 67 that i own and there's a so, lot of so movies probably like, I'm really excited i just was poking around a little bit and like the movie a lot of the movies that don't have like releases or something are like on youtube or they're, mm-hmm. they're not too like yeah i was kind of going through some of the ones i didn't have myself and i was like yeah that one looks pretty interesting there's like there's a few I, I might end up checking out so we'll see but uh yeah hoping for some kind of gems though mm-hmm yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm pretty excited. I would have preferred to get a nineties year, but I'm good with the seventies as well. Well, I was happy to see that um because I've been wanting to watch that movie Black Moon from seventy five. And yeah. uh so is that I was a criterion? Like, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, so, a I, so I picked it up. I was like, oh shit, that gives me a reason to fucking pick up that uh, criterion now because um I didn't even realize it was from seventy five, but I was doing the prep and I was like, Oh shit, that one's from seventy five. Awesome. Because I've been wanting to check it out. So Yeah, I'm a little hit and miss on that filmmaker. But um, he's made some good films. So yeah. he's, he's I've heard it's good. Noir, really like, yeah. He's an interesting filmmaker. He's like very like classical French, right? Um. All right, so serial killers. So I did a quick little Google search here, and I looked up to see top like a top serial t- killer like, movies. Yeah, like a top t- like serial killer movies based on or inspired by like the true stories or something like that. And well, this was. Uh, just before you go into the list yeah do you have a favorite oh that's a good question probably henry right henry is the one that oh what about that movie angst would you call that a serial killer movie well was that based on a real guy i think so it is actually yeah yeah that's actually you know that's that's one that's probably I, i i haven't looked at the list yet but anyways this one says 23 best serial killer movies based on or inspired by true events so I mean, I, it might be on this. I don't know, but if, if, if I not, see Texas Chainsaw or Silence of the Lambs on this bitch, <laughs> well, they're technically based <sighs> barely, though. Yeah, it's like it, I know it, it still has a connection. To, I would say inspired by. Yeah, more it than still has yeah. a connection to like real people. Like, yeah, but I, I know you're the, the events are totally fictional. But anyways, um. So yeah, 23 best. I don't know why they have 23. That's just a random fucking number. They should um, have 22. Yeah, that would have been nice, actually. Um, so number 23 is Wolf Creek from uh, 2005, the Australian film. I love that movie. I actually like the second one more. It's just, it's like so amped up and ridiculous. But Yeah, but I, I the, the, the like tension in that scene where they're by the campfire, bro. Yeah, <laughs> it just yeah. gets me every time. And that guy that mick taylor dude or whatever he's fucking dude, that that dude kills that role oh yeah <laughs> i love john love, Jarrett, right john Jarrett I, plays the i love aussie stuff like like outback stuff it's just so yeah, it his, reminds me so much of like the south in america you know what i mean but it just got that aussie twang yeah like oh man he's so bad shit in part two man he's just like out of fucking control it's ridiculous 
Yeah, um, I do but, like part two as well. Yeah, should make a third one. I um, forget who that's based on, but yeah, that is based. Yeah, on the actual that. real. Yeah, I know. Uh, number twenty-two is the Night Stalker from two thousand sixteen. Oh, crazy! What the fuck is this? Uh, I can't remember if I ended up watching that one. So it's played by Lou Diamond Phillips. Plays um, <laughs> Lou Diamond Phillips. No way. That's well. I guess it kind of makes sense, right? <laughs> is that is that a Richard Ramirez one? Yeah, yeah. It's because he, he's darker, like Richard Ramirez. So that actually kind of makes sense that he would play Richard Ramirez. But Lou Diamond Phillips, what a random role that is! Crazy. Yeah. 2016 I I, actually I don't, don't think I've seen that one no, I haven't seen that one I just like when you say Lou Diamond Phillips all I can think of is that Richie Valens movie <laughs> right <laughs> I actually think of Young Guns I think yeah. of La Bamba yeah. I just hear I just think of blah, blah, blah. I saw it in theaters a couple of years ago That's probably I why. think of Route 666 <laughs> <laughs> right right <laughs> uh number 21 next time I'll aim for the heart 2014 the fuck is this one based on? who's that based on i don't know um it's uh cedric yang's take on alan lamar and his crimes portrays a shocking picture of just how people got away with the wrong dunes in plain sight just because no one's those like lamar and uh move he killed women between 78 and 79 in france so it's uh, uh foreign foreign okay. search i have no idea okay that's probably why um Number 20 is extremely wicked, shockingly evil, and vile from 2019. Oh. Obviously, the uh, the, what's that uh, guy's name? Zach Efron. Zach yeah, Efron. Zach Efron. <laughs> he, you gotta admit, though, he does look like fucking Bundy, though. It's crazy. <laughs> the movie's funny. like a Ted Bundy fanfic. It's fucking not very good. I don't know why this is on the list, man. I, I it's crazy, but anyways. Um, oh, here we go. Number 19 is the Clovich killer, which we actually just brought up, which is loosely based on the BTK. Yeah. yeah so 2018 uh yeah so, so that made my top 10. i actually love that movie i rewatched watched it uh fairly uh, like for the summer series one year and it, it holds up man it's a good movie yeah i've watched it a couple times actually too and um i think it's excellent yeah it's really good good tension and shit so mm -hmm. um number 18 is no man of god from 2021 what the fuck is this elijah wood is the big picture here um also there's on the the killer who in 1980 was sentenced to death by electric oh speaking of ted bundy oh it's a ted bundy mm. interesting what so he plays ted bundy he's a little, he seems a little small for ted bundy <laughs> oh no he doesn't f you incarcerated ten buddy bill kirby I'm, I'm uh, yeah so he, he's got a different role but anyways elijah woods in this one but doesn't really I'm surprise me say i'm as going from zach efron to elijah woods <laughs> yeah no it, it's, it's some other dude that plays um i mean um, elijah wood played a great killer in maniac yeah he did actually, <laughs> he did a fantastic job of that uh number 17 is the strangers from 2008 yeah, I forget. It's loosely based on some unsolved murders. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they have any idea who actually did them, right? They I like fully so. got away with that shit. Probably not. So uh, everything we kind of see is a little bit more fictionalized, but it is based on some array of murders. Um, the Frozen Ground from 2013. I've seen um, that. What the fuck? What is this one based on? Serial killer Robert Hansen, aka the Butcher Baker. Oh, okay. Nightmare Maker. <laughs> Put your paper number me up. <laughs> Hanson abducted, sexually assaulted, and murdered 17 women in and around Anchorage, Alaska. Wow, a serial killer from Anchorage, Alaska. 17. Yeah. That's a, that's a pretty good number for me, not really knowing who he is. Wow, and he did um he did this pretty like 71 to 83. Wow. It's like 12 years, 17 victims. Kind of sounds like Dahmer's a little year. bit. Um, 17 was Dahmer's too. But in Anchorage, Alaska. I never heard of a serial killer from Anchorage, Alaska. It's interesting. That's pretty cool. Probably the one and only that they have. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck is this? Okay. Um, number 15 is Scream from 96. Explain this. Okay. So, uh, so well, there was James some Scream murders after Scream. Oh, come on. It says Kevin mean? Williamson no, drew inspiration no, for like the premise of Scream. Cow. From Danny Rowling, aka the Gainesville Ripper, a notorious Florida serial killer who murdered five students in 1990. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's he fair. based. Well, that's it's fair enough. Yeah. So he based this the story around a real killer. Okay. But the scream murders post scream are actually very interesting too. I don't. I don't know what that is. Um. So it was two kids who were obsessed with horror movies, especially Scream, 
And they basically, it wasn't a serial killer. They only killed one person, but they basically did like, basically like, like they would call the girl and they broke into her house and stabbed her and then went outside and recorded a video of them talking about the murder. And there's all these videos of them pre-murder talking about their plans and shit like that. Um, It's actually like, again, with, uh, there's a lot of footage of them. So uh, a lot of YouTubers have made videos on them, but one of the more fascinating uh, murders in, you know, modern time, because it was think like mid two thousands that this hmm. happened. Wow. I didn't, I didn't um, know this. But both of the, both of the dudes are still in prison. Um, there was actually a YouTuber who just interviewed one of them. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Crazy. Uh, number 14 is 10 Rillington place from 1971. This is a good movie. Actually. Um, that was like one of the thing. that was like one of the movies I was like enticed about if we got 71 that I was like finding as I went deeper. Yeah. The Richard we, Fleischer we film blocked you from getting 71. <laughs> yeah. The, the Richard Fleischer um, film. It, it's about, it's like a British serial killer. Um, but it, the cool thing about this, it actually even talks about it here in this little description. It, it focuses on uh, like Timothy Evans, who was wrongly executed via the death penalty for um, the serial killer's crimes. So they actually end up killing that the wrong person. That is why I do not support the death penalty because I don't trust them to get it right every time. Well, fuck, dude. I mean, God. I mean, you look at the <laughs> you look at the system right now, man. There's like, it, it, like it seems. You like know how many people are on death row that end up getting off death row? Well, like, dude, it's that's un- what they're saying. So with all the like, tech, I need a hundred percent accuracy yeah. if we're going to be killing people. So, <laughs> like in the last like five six years, man, it, like I was looking into this. It's so crazy how many people have been released from death row and in prison because of because there was a time in like the eighties into the early nineties where it was all about it was all about numbers, and so they were wrongly convicting generally like a lot of black people and a lot of minorities and stuff for crimes because they wanted to keep their numbers good, right? So all these years later, because no one really looks into it that much. And, and now they got a slew of people that are looking into all these these convicted killers and all these people that are spending time in jail for all these you know, all these type of crimes and stuff and proving that they didn't do them through all this new evidence and DNA and all this yeah. type of shit and stuff. And there's hundreds of people every year that are getting off. And a lot of these are death row inmates. And it's really fucking and you don't you don't hear it publicized a lot because they don't want you to know this shit. It's Hell, crazy. Even um, Damien Eccles, the from yeah. West Memphis Three, was on death row. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up, man. It's crazy how many people are getting off. It's such a scary thing, and, and I agree. I understand why people wouldn't support the death penally yeah. because it, it of this doesn't reason. have anything to do with me thinking that these bad people need to be killed because I'm all for that. It's just I don't trust the justice system to actually no. be correct no. a lot of every time. That which, is. if we kill one person who was innocent i feel like it and you support the death penalty that makes everybody partially a murderer in a way you know yeah. and i yeah. just i'm not for for that yeah i just it, it, there's just there's just there's just too many there's too many wrongfully convicted people and yeah. that are sitting in jail it, right now it's just it's because i don't have faith yeah. in the justice system i don't and I, and watching as much true crime as i do in datelines and stuff i've lost all hope in the systems because like it used to be you know you're proving beyond a reasonable doubt and stuff like that but so many people are being convicted now on almost not even circumstantial evidence like that is fucked to me man yeah. Because if you don't even have barely even circumstantial evidence, how is that proving with on with you know beyond a reasonable doubt? It's not. Mm-hmm. You can't fucking do that with no evidence. It's fucking insane. And there's so many people that are getting off. And we know, I mean, there's a structure in the world too. Like you got lots of money and shit. Like, look at fucking OJ. You know, yeah. there's people that can get their way out of these situations based on who they are and the money and you know what your representation really is in the in the system. And, and, and also who you're going up against and stuff like that. But I mean, Jesus Christ, dude, like I just, every once in a while I'll watch a dateline and I'll, I'll, I'm fucking livid. I'm just fucking <laughs> livid by the end of it. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, this guy may have done this shit, but this isn't the fucking point. There is a legality. There's a legal system for a reason. Yeah. You know, he might have done this shit. And I, I it's sometimes I'm like, yeah, I, need, like I need, pr- I need, I need to no feel evidence. confident and have no doubt. Like if I ever get jury duty on something like that, like a yeah. murder or something, like if I even have some doubt, that's I, I'm probably going to go innocent because even if yeah. I think he probably did it or she probably did it, I'm just 
I would hate. I think the like one of the worst fears is to be wrongfully convicted of something and, well, and have to do prison time. It's actually my biggest yeah. fear. It's my biggest yeah. fear in my life. And I talk about this all the time with people. Like going to jail for something I didn't do is just it scares the living shit out of me, man. I'd just be I'd just be done. You know, it's crazy. But um, but actually speaking of that, like I actually got called for jury duty on a serial killer that was um uh, for that trial that was in Prince Archer. Really? Uh, a few years ago yeah i couldn't go though because selected i no i could well i did i had to i had to to basically turn it down because i was at the airport and i was just, at Wait, the time what? i was just, i was turn a super it down well because the, the case was supposed to go to eight months i wouldn't have been working Wait, for eight months on. you're allowed to do that in canada yeah we're because... not allowed to turn down jury duty yeah well, we they, can't turn they can't force you to be... go they can't force you to go if you can't make a living Right. They have well, to like comp. I think they, they pay past you. The comp they don't. You they give you like they give you like ten bucks a day here, man. It's just well, absolute. yeah. They give you shitty money here too, but there's no, uh, like like you pretty you, you don't get a choice. If yeah, it, 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 that's why it's a duty. <laughs> yeah, see, that's that's fucking bullshit. You should have, yeah. you should have, the, right, you should have the right to refuse because we live in a fucking democracy, man. And plus, I, I mean, I couldn't go from like working at like to eight months of not working. Like that would be fucked. Like I got fucking bills, bro. Like I think your job's supposed to pay you, maybe. Yeah, that's how it is in America, I believe. Yeah, yeah. and that would never happen. So not with that fucking stupid company. But anyways, <laughs> but um, uh, well, d hell, didn't they pay you for parental leave? Um, Isn't that them? Do you get? Well, it's different. Um, yeah, you get a certain percentage of your wage. It wasn't like the greatest though. Yeah, like it's not great. So yeah, see, yeah, we you don't even usually have that yeah it's it's Especially not it's, it's nothing it's nothing to write home about i can tell you that yeah. but yeah um, um but no like jerry, i've had jerry duty once so far but i luckily didn't get selected i've never even had the interview so i've had it like three times and like two times they've been like yeah you don't have to show up that's okay thanks and then the last time like they like it, i was there for like literally an hour and they were like okay we picked her you can all go home i was there for like three hours and i got like ten dollars in the mail and I'm going to check. <laughs> what a crock of shit. <laughs> I um, never even cashed it. <laughs> so number 13 is from hell. Uh, 2001. The Jack the Ripper. The Jack the Ripper movie. Yep. Johnny yeah. Depp movie. Right? Yeah, yep. I've seen it. Yeah. Directed by the Hughes brothers, um, which is such a weird one that they directed. That's so, so random. Um, number 12 is the tenderness of wolves from 1973. Who's that one on? A lot of people love this movie. I'm not like the hugest fan of it. Um, that one is based on the crimes of Fritz Fritz Harmon, the killer who inspired Fritz Langs to make my the 1931 movie M. So Fritz Harmon, yeah, that's oh, the, the guy's okay. name was. Uh, I yeah. thought you were gonna say Fritz Honka at first. No. Um, number eleven is the Boston Strangler from 1968, and I would assume that's about the Boston Strangler. <laughs> Presumably. <laughs> Master. uh albert de, de salvo yeah right okay uh, so i i, I have seen that killer. i have seen this movie before i just can't remember it man damn oh. there, tony curtis henry fonda george kennedy signed me up yeah it's i think i Murray remember hamilton pretty good in this but yeah it's been a while man. oh fuck here number 10 we just talked about this one is the snowtown murders um <laughs> I, I i think it's i think it's um it's just poorly directed i think that's the main problem with this movie and i think the i liked it more the, this time yeah I, I i couldn't get into it man i just there's something about the it's it's so it i like the tone it's super bleak you know you you get the gist of it but like it's just the direction and it too like nothing to take away like i thought the acting in the movie is really solid and shit like that too yeah I think it's the just acting's good. it's just the storytelling is super sloppy it is like i said watching that's it, the direction it makes, yeah i feel like the guy who made it like made it in the mindset of like people already know the story that's how it feels yeah and you know i think that i, mean? I think that's, and that's you, not good <laughs> i think it's kind of funny that you bring that up too because that's kind of the one problem i have with the middle film we're going to re re review tonight for the average person that doesn't really know the story you'd be kind of confused right like you would you it, you'd be a little bit lost so but anyways we'll get into this um number nine is speaking of her uh monster from 2003 the eileen Warnos great movie story. great movie 
Yeah, Charlize dude, she, Theron literally looks. Ex- is that Charlize Theron? Right? Yeah, it is Charlize. It is so. Crazy. She looks so fucking similar to the trans. The transition they did, like the makeup they did for dude. the fucking crazy dude. It's so realistic. It, man. It's so. I watched that uh, a couple, maybe like a year or two ago. Yeah, I've seen it. Time. I've seen it a couple times actually too. I watched it for the first time since it came out. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, number eight is my friend Dahmer, which we'll get into later tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, from 2017, I couldn't believe it, man. When I was doing the show notes up for myself, I was like, "My friend Dahmer's from 17." Did mm-hmm. it, is it been out that long? Fuck. Yeah, dude, it, it's crazy that like I feel like in I just couple watched more it, years. Man. That's gonna be a 10 year anniversary. Like I feel like I just right. watched it, man. I, I like so we got it in 2017 or 18. Was it eligible in 18 for us? Like I don't remember it being this old. Um, I'll look that up. It's really crazy to me, man, because I was I, I I couldn't believe it said I I actually when I was doing it, I was like, what was it, 2020, 2021? I, I looked it up on IMDb and I'm like, 17? What the fuck? I think we I think we did get it in 18. Okay. So I mean, but still, it's still six fucking years ago. It's crazy. Um oh here we go. Number seven to catch a killer from 1992. All right. That's a gazy movie. Actually, you know what? Dahmer did not make my top ten any of those years. I'm surprised. In, my friend Dahmer, right? I could have sworn that made my list, but I guess not. Did the Dahmer movie? Into, oh no, we didn't do. Did we do that? Two thousand two? Yeah. Yep. No. Mm-hmm. Yep, did it make your top ten? Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, number six, uh, which we brought up earlier, Helter Skelter from nineteen seventy six. Yep, obviously based on one. Manson. Uh, number five is uh, Zodiac from two thousand seven. It's a very interesting story. I love that movie. Yeah. That's a uh, great picture. Who is yeah. it? Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. yeah that's a Mark good movie. Ruffalo. I like that movie. It yeah, is. Anthony Edwards. is. The, I just really wish that movie, the like the guy. story, not the movie, obviously the movie would have an ending if the story had an ending, but I wish the story <laughs> had an ending. Like they, I, it's just, it it's so compelling does. to me. They, yeah, they, the, there's been a lot of development on that lately. Didn't they? Didn't, aren't they pretty sure they know who it is now? Yeah, I think I read something like that too, but I wasn't sure if that was just like somebody saying some shit. I don't know. I, I never really take that stuff serious. Like, didn't they? Wasn't there something that just came out a little bit long ago, not too long ago, that said they proved who um, Jack the Ripper was through DNA? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like they actually put a name to the to Jack the Ripper, and I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, is this true? Because I never. Because you think that would be really popular news, like in pop culture. Yeah. Like, oh, we proved who Jack the Ripper is the most news. notorious, the most notorious serial killer in history because he's they they don't have a name to the you know to the uh, the the killer. So I'm like, this should be like international fucking news, literally international news, right? So I don't know. I didn't take a took it with a grain of salt, I guess. Um, this is a little bit shocking to me. So now I'm confused. Um, number four is Henry portrait of a serial killer from 1986 and number four. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. So what is above this one? Number three. Yeah. Oh my God. Ah, the Texas Chancellor massacre from 1974. Yeah, I, knew, I knew it was going to be on. Uh, of course. One, at least okay. the scream one. Oh, interesting. Number two is psycho from 1960. Right. Also Ed Gein. It's Ed Gein. Yeah. Oh. Um, and then, oh my God, uh, number Silence one. of the Lambs next. <laughs> yes, Silence of the Lambs is next. Oh my for, God. Okay, so that, like, yeah, that was a little bit anticlimactic. So then, fuck they sakes. did not have Dahmer. They nope. didn't have the Golden Glove, Mm-mm. which is one the, of my favorites. The house Man. that Jack built? It's not, no, that's fiction, all fiction, right? <laughs> It, well yeah i don't think any serial killer actually like yeah i kind of went to like, hell and well that it. would be all fictionalized it could be just just th- yeah i kind of just threw that out thinking just serial killer movies not yeah. like real life adaptions yeah i'm not 100 percent what's really mi- i mean i can think of a lot more serial killer movies. no deranged huh oh yeah. deranged that's a popular no aims, yeah that's an ed game one like it's, it's kind of obscure film. to probably be average. i think deranged is the best they've gained one yeah it's actually a canadian film or is he Tom Savini's like early work too. I think he's uncredited. Yeah, I th- I, yeah, I, th- I don't think he's credited on that one either. Um, yeah, I, I honestly, I off the top of my head, I can't really think of what isn't in there. Um, oh, actually, I can think of one: Citizen X. That's a crazy oh, yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. I have that. That's a fucking that nutty one. story, dude. Actually, the town that said dreaded Sundra. Da- the town that dreaded sundra sundown oh my god i can't talk yeah that that's that's one that could be there 
Yeah, but yep. Citizen X is a man, bad shit. Whoa, Summer of Sam? Summer of Sam, yeah. Badlands? That's another crazy one. I don't know I, Badlands was based on a serial killer. Oh my god, you know which one isn't there? Memories of Murder. Oh yeah. That is one of the best. Uh, that, and that was like one? a, sh yeah, that's like a real shocking thing to have. Dude, there. that's a great fucking movie though too, man. That's that like, that's, that's on a 10 out of 10 for me. That's dude, mad. I think it totally, incredible. man. That movie is incredible, dude. Incredible. Um, Ted Bundy is pretty decent too. That one wasn't on there. Yeah. The, 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 I always said the problem I had with the Bundy one is it kind of just follow. <laughs> it's long, but it follows just like one part of the story. You know, it's like, it's like yeah. from this point of the story to this point of the story. And I'm like, really, there's so much more of the story, but yeah, it's a little bit frustrating, but I guess those were lower budget films. Like, cause they did all four of those, like in the same year, right? Like the Dahmer and Bundy and Gacy and uh, Ed Gein movies, like all in 2002. I think they were like, uh, yeah, like 2001, 2002. Yeah. And it was all, they were all Lionsgate or something. They were studio films, right? I forget who did or those. Somebody did Trimark, them. maybe. Or Trimark, something? yeah. Somebody did all four. They, 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 they did all four in like a matter of like a year. So, um, in Cold Blood's another one. Actually, it wasn't on there. That's a good one. Um, yeah. That's what I can think of. I'm actually quite I mean, they had they had a lot of the good ones. But yeah. There's a few they missed. I think that uh, Memories of Murder is just a miss. That's a total. Just probably an oversight. Oh, and, and they, really, they didn't really have a ton of. There. They didn't really have a ton of foreign movies, did they? No, that's why Memories mm -hmm. of Murder is missing. Yeah. Citizen X is based on, I think, the Russian serial killer. And yeah, like, um, Angst is, is, German. is the German. German. Yeah, these are all foreign films, right? Yeah. Um, right. So interesting. But uh, serial killer. I think, I think Golden Glove is like super underrated. It's definitely not a movie anyone really talks about. It's a fucking gritty movie, man. Yeah, it'd be it's interesting. So like ugly. To see a, Dude, it was like. Movie. It was like Parker said, like, oh, this is a JP movie, and he was totally right. It ended up being my number one that year. <laughs> I love that movie too. I was shocked that it was your number one. Like, I, th that was like oh, the dude, fucking I, I, I'm a, landmine I, goes I love shit. movies that m make you feel like crap. And, or, oh, that like movie's that. like oh. disgusting <laughs> to watch. Like, you feel like you need to take a shower after you watch it. No, like, I that's just... that movie's doing its job, right? Yeah. Did you like, see that, they, Tyler? No, I remember oh, like I tried watching good. it like around then. I still can't I find like, a decent Blu-ray for it. It pisses me off. Like, yeah, so I think that, there's one. I, I love people. I love movies like that. <laughs> yeah, no bad movies. But hopefully that one gets uh, a nice release. That actually yeah. subtitles. Guys, I know there's like a there's like a French one or something like that, but it's like it doesn't have English subs or something. Oh yeah, that is a foreign movie, huh? Yeah, so oh, it doesn't yeah, yeah, actually yeah. have the subs or, or uh, German English subs German or some shit. Handusch. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's like a French release or something. Maybe it is a German release. I don't know, but the I'm German pretty movie, sure it's just it in German. Like, Dude, it's yeah. like so impressive the amount of top 10 lists we've done. Yeah, man. We've spent it is so much time impressive. prepping for them. So much time prepping for them. It's just crazy. Yeah. Speaking of which, we are going to do the 36, 1936 Maybe. here. Before we uh, go for break this year, we'll do that one too. Yeah, that will be an easy one to do. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, for show, sure, for show. Sure. Um, all right. So, should we talk about some movies then? Some Jeff. Talk Jeff about some Jeff. All right. All right. So, yeah, that's going to conclude the intro, and we'll be back momentarily with uh, some Dahmer talk. You. <laughs> Yo, who this? Yo, Moods, it's your boy, the ill-mented funky child, calling you to remind you that the featured reviews on this episode contain spoilers. Aw, oh, yeah, man, that's right, brother. Thanks for the heads up, player. Now go back to being an unproductive asshole. Fuck you. I tell your listeners to stop being so dumb, silly, sensitive. Yeah. And now, our feature presentation. All right, so getting into the featured reviews here on episode 254, Serial Killers Volume 2, Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, we're going to take it back to 1993 with a film called The Secret Life, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, definitely a lower budget type film. Um, do we really? It's kind of incredible, though, that he was arrested in 91, and then this film probably was in production in. 92 and yeah. released in 93 i mean it's kind of 
kind of impressive that they got so much details in that short amount of time. Yeah, because I, I believe the 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 biography, like the book, was out around the same time as the movie, so like it was pre his death too. Like, where did this? Like, I don't know the history of this movie at all. Like, like what was it? Like, did this? Was it like a direct to video thing? Yeah, I assume this had something like a TV movie. You know what? I really, I, I, I don't assume know. it felt to me like because that's how I kind of like view this. And like, okay, well, like obviously this isn't like allowed to be like that violent. Like, it obviously doesn't have any sort of budget. Okay, and it's like go. in this like letter box format so i kind of thought like this is probably something that was like a made for tv special like in 1993 so i just went to the facts on this it says originally intended to be a theatrical feature but ultimately wound up being released straight to video um yeah. it also says this movie was actually made in secret that's interesting <laughs> maybe they didn't have the rights and they were just hoping they could like get like legally be able to release it or something but the crazy thing about this, anyways, like we'll do a quick little synopsis, but it's the Jeffrey Dahmer story. Um, pretty much from like A to B, right? Like this is the one that kind of showcases, you know, a little bit of everything, you know. Yeah, it's like a super cut. Yeah, it's so it's based on the life of notorious serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer, who murdered 17 men and ate many of them before he was caught in 1991. Um, yeah, so this one actually is is different than the other two films because this one does like i said it, it kind of depicts everything i think it starts out with him getting arrested but then it, it's narrated by our lead actor and it kind of goes through um like the early uh his first murder and stuff and then it, it, it almost goes in chronological order this movie really tells the whole story in chronological and it actually shows the majority of like his victims and stuff like there's got to be like 15 kills in this movie at least right yeah um, it's crazy like it goes through and it tells you everything too like it doesn't it doesn't do it like my friend Dahmer where the whole story is like you know his you know his high school leading up to the first thing it has bits and pieces of that in here it shows a little bit of his childhood and stuff like that in kind of like minor flashbacks and it shows like the breakup of his parents and things like that but this one right here it's it's got a crazy pace for a film it's about 100 minutes long but it it and and the thing I like about this movie though too is that it's pretty factual like they didn't fuck around with like you know, I've seen this movie a few times now, and I don't really see anything in the film that that hasn't been like documented, like in the in the biographies and you know, in the and um, the documentaries and stuff like that. Like everything seems to be on point in this film, which is pretty interesting. Um, so that's that, that's always nice to see. But yeah, it is a lower budget type film. It's not shot on video. It's definitely shot on film, but it's it's uh, it's got a four three release from Intervision, of course, from Severn Films, um, which is pretty cool that it actually has a release. But um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, it. I, I, I like this version of the story because it gives you everything, right? I feel like if you're watching the 2002 version um, without knowing the whole story, you're not getting the whole story in that one. You're getting parts of the story. Uh, and then, of course, the third one, you're just getting a portion of Dahmer's story also. So this, this one right here um, is definitely my favorite one to watch because you get everything. And I like that about it, too. So what do you guys have you, have you guys seen this one before? No, yeah. this was the first time watching. Oh, okay. For me. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I've always really liked this, and you know, for such a low budget film and so low key uh, done, it's amazing that they they you know they were they stuck to the facts and you know they did what they did. Even hiring this guy named Carl Crew, don't really know much about him. He plays Jeffrey Dahmer in the film. I think he does a really good job. Like for a low budget, probably not much acting experience. I think he does a pretty damn good job. And that's one thing about all these Dahmer films: that everyone's depiction of Dahmer is so different. Right. But it's, the, they're all kind of the same. Yeah. I mean, he's probably my least favorite of the three. Yeah. yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, this movie kind of had this interesting feel about it where it almost felt like a documentary hybrid, like with him narrating it. And right. Just the way it presented things. Right. But I like that though, man, because it's, it's coming like from his head, you get the, you get the feeling that it's coming straight from Dahmer. And the thing I like about the narration that fits into that reality is that like, it's so factual based. Like they yeah, didn't, they, they don't fictionalize any of this. And, and I think that narration really helps with that, especially if you know the story, because when you watch this thing from A to B, it's like, wow, that's, that's literally the entire story. Like they threw everything in there. You know, it's like, you know, the, the notorious scene where, you know, he goes out to get some more shit and buddy escapes the, the fucking apartment and stuff. And the cops give him back to him and shit like that. Right. Like it's in here. So it, you know, they, they did it pretty well. And again, you know, this was released before Dahmer's death too. So pretty interesting how they put this together, but. Yeah, so what do you I guys think this one in terms of like the story is like the most complete version, mm -hmm. but I think that 
it where this one lacks like the punch of the other ones um like in terms of like uh you know violence and and stuff like that I think the um, violence. I think the violence is here. And one thing I do like about this film is th- that the other ones don't really do. Well, I mean, they they talk about it and stuff, but like he explains in the narration too, like as to why he was keeping body parts, like the skull, and like when he kept the, like when he really brought a skull to work and had it in his locker at the chocolate factory, like that's true shit. Like that was in the biography. That was right from his mouth. Like that's what he did. And they and they managed to put that into here, but. You know, to my to my amazement, like for a movie that has a lot of technical kills and stuff, it's not like overly gory. There is some parts, right, where he's chopping up bodies and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. I mean, you don't really need to get in to the the you know, it doesn't have to be overly gory to be effective and stuff because you you have a pretty general idea of how sick this shit was, anyways. Cutting up bodies and I mean, mm-hmm. would you want this movie? Like, I mean, I guess it was stated too. Like, there was even times where he had like lopped off the penises and froze them and used them as like dildos later and stuff like that i've never seen that in in any of these depictions <laughs> but i think it's in the biography like he said that's like, what that's i how, would do because he was using version. like yeah it was like you know that person not only you know the, i mean yeah he was he was definitely a necrophile yeah like Necrophilic. the reason why he, the, you know the why he kept the skulls is because they would never leave him like he would treat it like a friend like he would hold it and then cuddle <laughs> with it and it was written you know and why he ate the bodies it wasn't like technically because he was starving. It's because he wanted them to be a part of him. And he explains all this away. And I think they, they you catch the gist of it, even in this low budget film and stuff. I think it's pretty cool mm-hmm. that the, all those little anecdotes and all those little things that make Dahmer what, how, like why he ticked is, mm-hmm. is, pre- is present here. I mean, yes, the presentation isn't as nice as Dahmer from 2002. Or it's definitely not as nice as my friend Dahmer and stuff like these are higher budgeted films. But I think mm-hmm. for a budget that they did, even having a guy do what he did with the Dahmer character is pretty cool but I again it's more about the actual story to, like I like a complete version I do really like the other versions of these because I know the story right mm-hmm. so that's a little bit different too so I mean if I was to recommend a film out of the three to someone that was didn't really know much about Dahmer and stuff I'd be like well watch this you're going to get the complete thing and then definitely go in order right kind of yeah thing. so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I think I think the you're, those are fair points. I, I I do like this movie a good bit. I think that it's uh, in terms of um, the complete story, it definitely has the most um, stuff, you know, from beginning to end. Uh, and I I actually kind of like the narration um, aspect yeah, I, of it. I liked it too. It's like unique. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that the the coolest thing about this movie is just that it's like that it i think the one of the cool things about it is that it is low budget i think that it's neat it, it like it almost comes off like tv movie-ish which is probably why tyler felt like that it sort mm-hmm. of felt like that but um i think that when you think about like oddities and and like lesser seen films like this is this, this is probably one that not a lot of people have ever seen um because i don't think it had a great release for a long time and even the the version the dvd the intervision did i think is out of print now um and that one is it was just the dvd yeah um but uh i think that it, i think it's cool that it that i think that people that like serial killer stuff especially Dahmer, i bet most of them haven't seen this but i would re- i would definitely recommend people check this one out because it does give you like the most accurate story out of out of all of them and the most uh things covered Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it has like all the little things you know like you know when he got arrested for luring that high school kid into his apartment and stuff like that and you know he actually got a record from that like he had he was registered after that right because Mm -hmm. the kid was underage and stuff and that's what makes the other scene so compelling when the when the the asian like escapes from his apartment or whatever and um you know and the cops essentially give him back to him but i mean really in that moment in time like you're thinking you're scratching your head going you know all the cops had to do is just run a quick little check on dom he has a record right and they would have been like oh he went he you know he he got five years probation for soliciting a minor and you know he's now registered and shit so this might play into this kind of thing too they could have stopped a whole fucking whack they could have stopped fucking 13 murders yeah, right, right Dahmer in that fucking moment, it's the craziest thing ever that that actually happened. Like, yeah. fucking my, talking about shitty police work that we we're, you know, yeah. going back to what we were saying in the intro. Man, dude, that is like the ultimate, right? 
yeah, so crazy. It's, that's the thing about him is like he wasn't like smart like these other guys in terms of evading like capture. No, it's actually he yeah. like he was almost like too obvious. <laughs> like yeah, it just, like, it's like says, he, I think that's what it was just completely basically like, caused him to negligence for to him get to, like, like caught. Is that he just like felt you know he. He says like, that. He says that they'd even depict this too. Like I remember in the biography, they're they're talking about like Dahmer, and you know he was, he, you know he was very he was more careful about it when he was at his grandma's house. Like he killed like four. It's so crazy to think that he killed like four people in his grandma's house. It's fucked up. But anyways, yeah. but anyways, like obviously he lost his fucking marbles when, you know, he moves out into his own and stuff, and he he starts killing. But he but he like oh, they they depict it in this film too, where he's like he knew that he was way too out in the open he was doing way too much and stuff and he knew it was going to come to an end but he still had to you know to serve that urgency that you know that craving for you know you know the 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 male companionship and stuff so he kept doing it but he knew he was going to get and and i think deep down he even stresses that he wanted to get caught because he knew it was wrong like he Mm -hmm. had a conscience like he stresses over and over again that like he wasn't trying to be too careful and, and get away with shit because he wanted this to stop like he had a conscience and even talks about like he felt bad for the families and shit, but he was so like almost narcissistic in a sense. Like he just was not going to give up those temptations. Right. Like he was just going to fucking keep doing it because he was kind of greedy. And it, it's just, it's a really interesting story, but I think they even depict that in this, like you get that, you get that vibes from you. You learn those things. Like if you didn't know about him in this and it's like, I think it just works to me, works for me with, with the narration and stuff. But I, I like it. I like, like I said, the complete stories and stuff like getting parts of them and stuff is, is different, but I don't know, man, I, I really like this version. I think it's great. So it didn't have the, uh, the, the, the head in the box thing. Did it, did that one have this? No, I the head in so. the box or like in the locker. No, no, no. In the, in the box. Cause that actually happened too. I think like he had, oh, he had with his head dad, in, with his dad. Yeah. yeah um yeah because no. he said i think in the in an interview and in, like one they, of the interviews he did that that's in Dahmer. that's yeah, like his, that big Dahmer. that big that big flashback scene with his dad yeah yeah no that 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 that, that should definitely really happen where you had the head in there yeah 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 because he said that the whole thing would have ended right there had yeah. the, they actually opened the the box or whatever right and uh he also the mannequin that was real too that was yeah. real too yeah i knew yeah. about that yeah, so there's yeah. like the co- I, yeah, I don't think they do the box thing in here. They don't do a lot of well, they probably didn't know that it was probably like they, they, they a lot of stuff came out years later, you know right. what I mean? Be true, it's also too like this version is very clearly like we like the most abbreviated version, so you can only fit so much in like 99 right. minutes. Mm-hmm. Like, the, like this movie starts when he got discharged from the army and stuff like that in like 1982, right? Which actually, yeah. none of the films actually go into that much. Yeah, not really, right? It's it's. They don't really even go into it like in the the mini series either, do they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Oh, they do. Okay. Yeah, they do. Yeah, because um, he was a, he, he was a pretty big alcoholic too, right? Like that. That's yeah, one, they, that's why he got do. discharged. Yeah, he started drinking like super heavily. Like he started drinking when he was sixteen, and by the time he was graduating, like he was a full blown alcoholic, man. But that and he, yeah, he, they kind of touch on it in in Dom, my friend Dom, or yeah, yeah, they do. They show like the shadows of it being you know coming up. Well, they, 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 like, there's that scene in, in my friend Dahmer where he's in the back seat and he's just chugging beers and, and Buddy driving's like, whoa, dude, I've never <laughs> seen drink like that. He's just fucking hammering back the booze, right? But that's, you know, I mean, again, and that was all because of his identity crisis, right? Like, he knew he was different and he was, you know, he was awkward already. And he just, man, like, he was trying to drown his sorrows, man. How about this? Trying to the escape. guy who, the guy who spent his whole life harming people served as a combat medic in the military right how, but again if, that, but again if you know Dahmer like you know I mean again it was like this weird sexual like urgency and like you know the the certain things that you know why he was doing these things but like he had a conscience though right like that's the, that's the weird thing about Dahmer like he you know I mean I guess in those moments it's like different right it's it's maybe it's not like psychosexual you know like you're saving people in the army I don't know I don't know how people's brains work and shit, but um, yeah, th- that's actually one of the most awkward moments I think in my friend Dahmer actually is the scene where he's at the doctor's office. My God. Oh God. Oh my God. That, that part I f- had forgotten about that. And I was like, Oh fuck. <laughs> Dude, he totally gets yeah. a boner when he's like cough and he gets a fucking boner. It's crazy. But you know, that's his uh, 
because he was gay, right? So makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But um, but yeah, no, again, I think it, I think it, you know, this one, it just sheds a lot of light. It just tells you straightforward, like this is not confusing. It's 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 A to B, but I think it's pretty well done. And it gives you the majority of everything. Um, the, the one thing I like about the 2002 version of Dahmer is that they actually do show him working in the chocolate factory. I think that was interesting because it's something <laughs> yeah, that, that don't cool. really do here. Um, it's never really talked about a whole lot. They, the, the, the most famous yeah. thing about the factory is the fact that Dahmer mentioned in an interview that he had brought that skull to his locker and and because he wanted his friend to be there. Literally, that's how he says it. He's like, I just wanted my friend to be there with me. It's companionship. <laughs> Like it's fucked up, man. Yeah, that was like you guys definitely know more than I do, but I probably know a lot more than like the average person about yeah. them. And uh like that was one of the things I didn't know was the chocolate factory. Yeah. Yeah. But that was the weird thing about Dahmer. Like he like he was like a good employee. And like, you know, he he was like and like if you didn't if you take out the murdering, like he wasn't he was an awkward, weird person, like he was into weird shit and stuff, but like he wasn't like this you know, this deadbeat fucking person that like didn't have an income and like, he wasn't like a piece yeah. of shit in that, in that aspect. Like he held down a job yeah. forever. And like, he, he functioned like a normal person, except for he just had a really dark secret life. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's so <laughs> fucking weird, man. But I mean, I guess the best way to blend in society is just to be normal. Right. Like just, just do normal yeah. shit. Right. Hide in plain sight. Yeah, that's yeah. how you hide in plain sight, man. And it's exactly what Dahmer was doing, essentially. But you know, he wasn't, you know, and that and that's another thing that that I'm that they depict, like, you know, in pretty much all these films too, like his apartment, like he was very meticulous, except for he just didn't know how to mask the smell of rotting flesh, apparently. But um because they depict that, right? And like it like in the uh in the Netflix series, man, that's a big yeah. thing with the neighbor and stuff like that about like the smells and shit. And like, she complained about it so many times. No one ever really mm -hmm. investigated yeah. about it and stuff. The like it was Netflix a huge thing, but he was always super clean. Like he always looked yeah. good. Like he always, he took care of himself. Like, you know, he lifted weights, like obviously he drank and smoked. Another th it's weird. Sorry. Another thing that, uh, nobody, none of the films mentioned is his obsession with the exorcist three, which that's probably is more so because rights or something, but yeah, it's yeah funny. I've always they, found that they, interesting. They touch on that in the series. You really would like the series. They touch on that in the series. It's kind of yeah. funny. I don't yeah, like he always tried to get the, people to watch Bible. Exorcist 3 with him. Yeah, I, like that's like, that's literally like one of the, like the guys like we're at the beginning. Like he's like, we're going to watch this. And he's like watching Exorcist 3 with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember that from the biography, man. Unless it wasn't in there at the time. No, in the, it, oh, at the time. I like his obsession with that movie. Yeah. Yeah, no, he was he was super obsessed with that. It's too stuff. bad that they missed that though. Like in the movie, like in this version of the Dahmer story, um, he's wearing a She Devils on Wheels shirt. It's a Herschel Gordon Lewis shirt. That could just be the director's a big fan of the film. Um, yeah. maybe Dahmer had mentioned he likes Herschel Gordon Lewis movies because like, I mean, <laughs> you look at their first gore film, they were hacking up people, like the guts and stuff. So it yeah. actually like there is a definite connection with that shirt to Dahmer. I don't know if that's just totally fictional. Maybe they just spent a call the guy made like, well, this is a fucking disgusting, gory movie. So of course, Jeffrey right. Dahmer wears yeah. a shirt of it. Right. Right. Cause the first thing I think of when I think of like, you know, Dahmer is, he always talks about like, I just wanted to see what was inside of shit. And there's a really disturbing moment in, in my friend Dahmer when they're fishing and he's like, Hey, throw the fish back. And he just like attacks this thing with a knife. And they're like, the kids are like all horrified. Yeah, they're like, what that's the all they're like, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? Man? He's like, I just wanted to see what was inside. And he says it like so melodically and you're like, Oh my God. Like that's it's the up. only thing I remembered about that movie. Yeah. <laughs> but it just instantly when I was thinking about it, I was like, oh yeah, like the, the Hershey Gordon Lewis shirt, shirt, man, you know, the guts. Cause that's pretty much what those films are like blood feasts and shit. You're just ripping guts out of people and shit. So, but yeah, maybe they didn't have access to, or maybe they didn't have the information that he was obsessed with that film when they made this film and they, or they just didn't have an exorcist three shirt to, to put on our lead. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I'm just speculating. Hmm. But I will say about the uh, the deaf guys. So how that's portrayed in the TV in the Netflix series? There's a huge like you watch it. You watched it, right, Tyler? Yeah. Okay. So you know how they go into the relationship with with the deaf guy, right? Yeah. And they they, they really try to humanize Dahmer in this too, and it's I think that's what pissed off a lot of people too because they're like, oh, well, he's a serial killer. He mm -hmm. kills gay men and stuff, and all of a sudden he was having a relationship with this dude. Well, the family has said that that was totally made up, like he was not dating this guy for a couple of weeks and stuff. They, the family says that he basically disappeared and probably was killed the day that he was, you know, abduct, abducted, 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 abducted. Like, abducted. Oh my God. I can't talk right now. And 
Yeah, so it was like a one time. But there was other people that came out and said that they'd seen Dahmer with with that guy like a week or two before. So there's conflicting allegations about that whole thing. But I mean, the family would probably know a little bit better. But how so. that murder is depicted in this version, The Secret Life, is actually kind of funny. It's not funny. I, I'm sorry. That's really rude to say. But I mean, it's it's funny in a, in a sense that he's fucking with them. And just knowing that Dahmer especially what you get in the depiction of my friend Dahmer of how he actually was a clown in school and shit. Like he did, he had a weird sense of humor and he did weird shit and stuff. I could kind of see him doing this. It probably didn't go down exactly like this, but there's a scene in this film where he does, he picks up the, the, the deaf guy and he's behind him with like a Turkey cutter. And he's like, Oh, you can't hear that. Can you? And then he just fucking lops <laughs> off his head basically. Like he's kind of fucking with him, right? Because he knows he can't hear him. And it's funny because it's meant to be, but it's also sick too, but he lops off his head, but how it's depicted in this, he picks him up, drugs him or not drugs him. And well, he, I think he does actually. And then he fucking, he basically cuts off. He his pretty head much drugged everybody, bro. Yeah. Those yeah. Is yeah. I think yeah. It's, in this version, I think it's, he does Very drug him, but before he even goes down, I think he cuts off his head, but that's how they do it in this depiction. And the Netflix series, there's like, like a whole long drawn out relationship where like he's dating this guy and like they're having a relationship and it's, you're like it's making the viewer wonder if he's actually going to kill this guy and stuff and of course we know the story does but they're just saying it's very fictionalized that it didn't go down like that but who knows i mean you got conflicting you got conflicting uh views on what happened from family members and people that knew i think his name is davis or something i can't remember but um the actual person very well and they said they saw Dahmer with him a couple weeks before he went missing so who knows i i just find those little things are interesting but yeah i mean it is a, it is a tv series right you're trying to i don't know yeah. why you, like i get the humanization because i mean to do to try to humanize like bundy would be almost disrespectful because the guy was not human but dahmer is different though in a sense because going back to the whole conscious thing and like he knew what he was doing like he admitted it was wrong like he, there was a lot there so i guess if you kind of put that aspect on him that he is trying to humanize them a little bit. I guess it works a little bit better in this case. I'm not trying to say that you should humanize serial killers because let's face it, they're pretty fucked up. Yeah. But I think, I think, this, I think it's, it's still fine. There's to an like, argument. Like there's an maturity. argument. Here. Yeah. It's still fine to like maturely look at like, you can't just like, obviously they're like horrible, like they're horrible people, but a lot of these people, like they have like such well, all of them like really how all these just these such urges. It's not like these, it's not like they want to feel like this, you know what I mean? It's just like there's something wrong with these people who bring chemistry and events of your life where they end up like this. So, like, I don't think it's, like, bad, like, maturely trying to, like, look at, like, that, like, there's good and evil in everyone, you know what I mean? Right. Right. I don't think it's anything I'm maturely looking at it like that, but yeah, uh, one thing, though, like, they, I really think the Zac Efron one, Bundy movie, like, kicked this off is, like, they keep doing, like, I noticed they did it in Dahmer, too, where they're, like, almost, like, let's make it sexy. Like, there's all these, like, random, that, like, Especially the, um, but, but the, it's actually true to life in a way. What do you mean because, sexy? Like, what, well, like, there's, like, like in the, in, like, the Dahmer one, like, there's, like, random shots sometimes of, like, Evan Peters just, like, in the shower for, like, no reason. It's just, like, clearly to show off Evan Peters. <laughs> well, like the interesting thing about that dude is like the there's the culture in which like if especially for like the richard ramirez one if you watch yeah. like there were so many women who were just like free him and was like in love with him and stuff it's so weird but it's yeah. there is definitely a cultural element where these serial killers are sort of glorified in a way and it, especially women seem to get into them like a, yeah, a, lot, they, a lot of women do yeah um, they don't, yeah they, i've heard a lot of, like a lot of different scenarios through me. Yeah, like, i forgot well, even about that. even the uh richard ramirez documentary they show footage of people like outside the courthouse oh man that's signs, crazy like that's like, we, like i love you and stuff and like Dude, that's a common thing eh? stuff. with like women falling in love with like guys that are on death row and shit yeah that's so weird it's so yeah, like crazy. i completely forgot like how common it is for like these guys to have basically like groupies like the yeah the, like, jail you know one cool. thing i always found so fascinating that was never really it's never really overly depicted in these films and stuff like even when the biography came out but then it, it became obviously became an issue i think more recently because people started realizing like who the victims were of jeffrey dahmer and then they started like it, it happened in like in the last bunch of years and stuff obviously with all the extra exposure for all these films and stuff but 
um that he was kind of getting dubbed as like a racist killer though too because the majority of his 17 victims i think there's only three white people and I, the rest are like you know yeah. quote unquote minorities right black asian but i think there was right, a one yeah. nat- one uh, i think there was a know. native guy Latino, yeah, like, yeah. different races besides i white. think i think a lot of that had to do with the fact that um the area where he lived yeah. was was that's sort ex- of uh that's exactly right yeah. but also <laughs> that's if you look at it too i feel like the police give less of a shit yeah so yeah. it's more um mm. you know good well, for him in terms of of getting away with it um to to do minorities and to to and a lot of these a lot of these people also were like shunned you know for being gay yeah. and stuff like that and um i think it was more I, I mean he probably had a sexual attraction to minorities probably too um but uh i think it was mostly like a convenience aspect i don't think yeah. it had it him yeah. being racist I, like no no i trying to I, take out minorities from well, the world I, I don't i think it's in is it in the dawn or is it in this one where he even says that like you know he he doesn't really see people like that it was just he likes they he do likes, it in my he friend likes, Dahmer there's a good scene which he I likes that was super foreshadowing where he's in the hotel room with the black guy yeah yeah and for sure he says right. like I wonder if your like insides are the same same color as mine and stuff no 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 I think um, he says I, th- I think he says he says your insides are the same color as yeah. mine and it's like kind of like a contrast to like you know their skin tones and stuff but you were the yeah. same person you know kind of thing and it's like oh fuck the guy's like what the f- how do you take something like that as a person you're just like what the fuck but are you i thought it was about? great foreshadowing because yeah yeah um yeah how no that's a good part ended up going yeah, yeah all that stuff is like basically 100 percent correct they like they do the best job of depicting like the social like implications of like how like his victims came along and um in the netflix series it's like the thing they definitely do the best on that like these movies don't it, really it totally was it was just like you know he was like they were unfortunately you know the product yeah. of their, their areas and stuff but i mean if you look at the 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 first killing you know like he he wasn't looking for a specific type he was just looking for somebody and they and the first he was looking for an opportunity be, yeah white, it's all it's he, convenient he just happened to be a white a hitchhiker, hitchhiker and, and that's yeah. just how it went down like i yeah. mean so you if you move into like a lower budget area i wouldn't i'm not going to say full-on hood or ghetto or something like that but he lived in like a lower budget area and stuff and yeah i mean you know there there's obviously mixed races and stuff but you're probably going to get a lot more minor, minorities in those areas and of course i mean like yeah, the old his apartment goes, was 300 dollars a month yeah like the old yeah, saying goes like if you know if, if if you if you commit a crime against a white person in a in a lower but that's when the cops get involved right yeah so you don't you don't go out and fucking start abducting well, white people i think and, i the think cops a lot of involved. it too like even even when you look at the everybody knows the story of the of the one victim who could have gotten away um had mm-hmm. the police intervened you know but the the women outside was like yeah. hey this is this is something up with this well a lot of the you know theory is that the police just like didn't want to bother with gay people like no they, that's, yeah, it was. Two, that's something the two, they really the highlight gay the guys Netflix. they're like you know early 90s they're like oh fuck it, let's get oh yeah because it was this. still yeah. it was still like not taboo but it was it was also at that time too where you know people were fucking honestly uh, scared of of gay yeah. people too at that time because that was like the AIDS. height of aids and stuff yeah. and like they mm-hmm. literally everyone was so uneducated and everyone like oh if i touch a gay person with it like i'm gonna yeah. get aids i'm like what the fuck like but it there was, was so much thing. disdain for gay people at it that was time. it was it was a horrible time in in our history for that type of shit i even remember live like man people were so subversive against like and just like oh my god dude it was so bad like i just like thinking back on those days i'm just like jesus man like what the yeah. fuck is wrong with people man it's crazy like even the whole aids thing was so fucking crazy too like people were so disgusting with it they're just like well i you know you only get it if you're fucking gay and like everyone's just so like ridiculous and uneducated about the whole must shit, never man. seen kids right right exactly exactly but you know all that shit is you know i'm glad people are educated now and it's not they they yeah. should know that it's not like that but you know there, there was a time right and, and that's right because you got cops that are patrolling these areas and they're probably not on the level maybe probably a little bit racist and, and homophobic too so and yeah, that, that combination was all. and and that caught co- and that combination was a perfect combination for um for Dahmer essentially yeah. right yeah, because nothing him. was going to happen yeah, it was like a more perfect him storm. Away with it. Yeah, it was like a perfect storm, man. The cops weren't gonna do they were they weren't even gonna touch this dude, man. There's no yeah. fucking way. 
Oh, it's just a lover's core of it. He whatever. gets oh, he gets away with a lot of stuff in that Netflix series too by just like saying like it's gay stuff and people are like, yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, people are just like, okay, <laughs> let me get out of here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like there's multiple like, oh, there's like, don't go in there. There's gay stuff in there. <laughs> yeah, there's gay stuff, I got gay <laughs> stuff in here. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, this one, uh, this first one here, um, it was a nice watch. I, I'd never seen it before. I'd always known about it. I'm, I'm kicking myself for never picking up that Intervision title mm-hmm. um, just because I would like to own this. Um, I think that was actually the very first Intervision DVD I ever bought with that one. So it was an early one. It was. It was like a major early one. So, but yep. Yeah. Oh, that thing is. Riding over, riding over. Um, you guys have anything else on the Secret Life, Jeffrey Dahmer? No, I think I'm good. T ninety three. All right, throw out some ratings. Maybe we'll start with JP. Yeah, um, I dig this flick. Uh, it was, it was, it was. Um, I was actually surprised, like how the narrating, the narration. It was first. It was a bit jarring, but I kind of really liked it. But I thought it like was a cool way to tell the story um so that worked for me a lot more than i was expecting and also um i just think that this it's just like an easy watch like it's just interesting the whole time um yeah it's a little lower budget and stuff but i almost feel like the look of it kind of adds to to the the vibe a little bit too yeah because it it does look a little more grainy and gritty Mm -hmm. i kind of like that but it also kind of feels like tv movie ish too which i also kind of like it's interesting that. it's like so low budget it almost seems like at first glance you're like is this video like shot on yeah video? like it almost yeah it feels like it, it almost feels like that right but it's just like um, really low grain like i think it was shot on 35. it could have been shot on 35 and like edited on tape or something probably it's probably yeah. exactly why uh, i absolutely like thought it was a tv movie yeah <laughs> i mean it, i mean i mean the fact that it's presented in 4-3 would actually you know solidify an argument for that though too right because oh, yeah. like, that's what, film, yeah. you would shoot it in four three. You wouldn't even shoot it in wide screen. Out to me. Yeah, that's yeah. why I immediately just thought, like, oh, this is probably some TV special. Mm-hmm. <laughs> TV special. But that would have been um, pretty that pretty violent. Like, I mean, it's not like overly good, but it has its moments though. Like when he's like, cradling the like, skull. When like when he's cradling the skull and shit, and he's like, Yeah, you'll never leave me. <laughs> I thought that was like but like I thought it was like it kind of looked it looked like so like fake enough that it's like nobody's like I don't think that's like scarring anyone, but it yeah, would have been like something that if they would have played late at night, you know what I mean? Like HBO. Yeah. Yeah. That type of stuff doesn't bother me. Like even when the, the cops open up the fridge and like, oh shit, there's fucking there's heads and there's feet and there's arms and there's like <laughs> yeah. a penis over here. And I'm like, and you know, obviously all that stuff is just like rubber and like whatever, but it doesn't bother me when you're watching a film with a low budget like that. Like I'm just it doesn't bother me. It it looks fine to me so um i give it a seven out of ten yeah um tyler what do you give this one okay well this one's kind of hard to evaluate because yeah it's as a film that like production wise and just pres- the way it's presented i, I kind of like have issues with it that way but i kind of if you're like looking at it is the lens is just like something that was like a low budget tv or video thing that's kind of just meant to be be like mellow and informative and more educational than like thrilling i think it's pretty cool like it does have this kind of like hybrid documentary like feel to it that's like a little bit unique but i thought it was a little repetitive at times but it's i don't think it's bad it's probably worth checking out just for the educational thing if you're like um interested in jeffrey but i'm going to be a bit lower on this at a five and a half well it's a little bit repetitive because they actually show and depict the majority of the people that he killed Right. I mean, yeah, I kind of like that. It is the it same thing. It is the same thing over and over again because, like, he literally had a method. Like, I mean, he the tried the same thing over he, and over again. <laughs> yeah. He would, you know, pick him up somewhere and fucking drug him. And, and then, uh, well, and on a couple occasions, you try to make zombies out of him. But, uh, for the most part, it ended the same way. But, um, I kind of like that. I, for me, one thing I really find compelling about this film, it's like just under 100 minutes. There's never really any downtime in it. It's always, it's always progressing. It's always telling you something. It does, it does flip back and tell you, um, bits and pieces of a childhood and gives you reasons, you know, um, to, as to why Jeffrey was the way he was and stuff like that by even depicting his mom in, in a, in a very brutal way. Cause like, that's something that even in my friend Dahmer, I don't think they do the greatest because this mom was kind of a piece of shit, man. And like, she's not, she's portrayed not as a great person in my friend Dahmer, but she was a lot worse than they depicted. Like, I think they did a better job in the, um, in the, in the Netflix series 
with the mom yeah molly ringwald she, she was pretty brutal man she was pretty brutal like to to jeff and stuff and and obviously Wait, the, the molly ringwald it's his mom yeah in, oh i think it's the his, netflix one yeah i don't hers remember is fucking hilarious. Hers is stepmom is it is it molly fuck i don't remember who it, Wait, is it really molly fact, ringwald? check this i'm, I'm tired. fact checking it right now <laughs> carly screaming at the fucking theory she's like fucking tyler's at it again lying through his she, teeth she, he's no fucking sherry, around he's fucking sherry fucking dahmer around. sherry dahmer is the Buzz Molly Ringwald? Yeah, that's his mom. Okay. Crazy. Yeah. Well, because he never had Richard, it. Yeah, and his dad oh, no. Richard Jenkins. Yeah, because his no, did his dad ever no? He did his dad remarry in the I'm in thinking, real That's what I was thinking. Is that his stepmom though? Yeah, I know he has a mom in that. Yeah, because his dad remarried after. Okay, yeah, so no, it was his stepmom. That's she yeah, plays his stepmom because his mom got all mom. fucked up and she ended up dying and shit like that too, yeah. right? The yeah, she tried Richard killing herself Jake. in 94. Yeah, yeah. Nice. But she was all fu- like she was fucked up on drugs and boot. Like she was just oh man, she was a mess. <laughs> but like th- but that's one thing I like about this film is that they give you bits and pieces of that like, you know, his childhood with like, you know, the acid and the animals and they give you bits and pieces. They don't go heavily into detail like they do like in, you know, other versions of it, but they give you enough of everything throughout his story to really kind of depict the whole the whole journey of Dahmer so I always think it really works for me, man. Like I, going into these, they're like, oh yeah, all these movies are like a hundred minutes to like 110 minutes kind of thing. Right. These are long fucking movies. But then again, you know, they're, they're almost biopics. Right. So mm-hmm. th- there's a lot of story that's being told and shit like that, but it's, it's incredible. Like, you know, again, going back to low budget, the direction for this, just how this whole thing came to be is, is, is really incredible to me that uh, they kept it so on the level, not fictionalizing really anything and stuff. It, that, that's one thing I love about these type of movies. And I also hate at times too, when there's so many like questionable and fictional things that they throw into these biopics. I fucking hate when filmmakers do that. When they start fictionalizing shit to the point you're like, that didn't fucking happen, man. Like you're just sprucing yeah. this shit up for no reason. It drives me nuts. But this is a great example of just telling the story, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to overdo a certain elements and stuff. And it's, it comes off as being a really, really fantastic film for myself. I've always really liked this one. Uh, I think Carl Cruz is pretty cool. There is a moment, I think, I think in the end of the film when he kind of loses his shit when he's getting arrested and stuff like that. I think that's probably the worst acting part in the film. <laughs> I think it comes off as a little bit over like it's not that believable, but I mean, I'll forgive it. But I'm a big fan of this one. I'm giving it an eight. Um, I, I've I've championed this one in, in the past and stuff. I think it's a really decent film. So but yeah, so that is uh, my secret life. Jeffrey Dahmer from 1993. Dahmer. All right, so moving into the second film uh, from 2002, just simply called Dahmer. Um, Mm -hmm. This one right here is starring Jeremy Renner, which was kind of a shock, actually, to see him playing or portraying Jeffrey Dahmer. I don't know why. It just... It just seemed different to me that they got a name I, w- I mean was Renner was he a big name in 2002 I don't really remember I don't think he was really breaking out yet the, yeah. the earliest movie I can think of or like Jeremy Renner was a big deal was like the Hurt Locker and that's like 2007 yeah because that was a big fucking that movie won Academy Awards and shit didn't it yeah one best picture yeah yeah so that was like or probably was a best huge or- break my own best best director. I don't want to quote that. It, it won some shit. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know again. Catherine Bigelow was the first woman to win Oscar for best director. I don't know the one best picture, the one best director. Right. Right. Catherine Bigelow of uh, Near Dark fame. Right. Um, yeah. So this one right here is um, it's not like an A to B story. Uh, th- th- this one's actually kind of interesting. It, it 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 tells a story like in the present and it, it flashes back and it basically kind of almost depicts like a, the breakdown of his first kill um at his grandma's house with the hitchhiker and it really kind of depicts uh another certain kill that he has too um and it kind of goes back and forth like there's other things that are mixed in there and stuff but it, it really just kind of follows those parts of the Dahmer story and and it, and you know i mean i think this one right here gets it's got the darkest moments i think with the um the club montage I always thought yeah, that was super- I actually particularly love that, especially how it, it depicts that he's so like lost in it. And like, it's almost like he's exhausted with the amount of like sex and uh, abduction and murders and all the stuff he's doing yeah. and the, the lack of like 
the fact that he's doing all this and not even coming close to really getting caught that he just sort of is like plus okay. all the alcoholism and stuff he's just sort of out of it and just literally like drops the roofie in, like in like he he got so comfortable doing it that he just, just had a mental around lapse it. yeah to where he just like does it in front of everybody and the bartender is like yo what that's i think i think that's depicted <laughs> in the netflix series too like that was a real event that he got fucking yeah. tossed out of the I mean, club he for caught, fucking, yeah he got tossed out of a he got fucked up yeah people. but it, it's interesting yeah. this one because i don't think they beat him up or anything and they just kind of toss him out but i think he got fucked up in that though but yeah because he he also was raping a bunch of people well they, you know it, what i mean yeah. that he didn't murder right yeah. right yeah he was drugging them and fucking yeah it's just ass for shit it was crazy man oh. like fucking yeah but that might that montage really see this movie is like the darker i'd be so mad if jeffrey it's so dark and raped me it, it's so dark in that aspect and it like like i said this is not the full full story so like if you didn't know the whole um history of Dahmer, this one might be a little bit confusing because it only follows certain parts yeah, but but gets, I don't think it's really confusing. I just think there's yeah, a lot I of stuff left. No, 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 out. not confusing, not confusing in a in a in a, in a general com, uh, general way of being confused. I meant like just as like if you were watching Dahmer wanting to know like the whole story, it would just be a little bit frustrating. I think for the viewer on a first time watch that you're not getting the entire story here. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not really like an informative movie. It's more of a. Vibe it's not like movie. a straight up biopic. It says biography, but it's not like a straight A to B yeah, biopic no. at yeah. all. That, this, and that's just what I'm saying because, like, from my secret life, you get an A to B story here. You don't. You get it's it's almost kind of artsy in its sense. You get because, you get a, yeah. you get a good gist of the story though. Like yeah, I yeah. feel like you get like. 80 percent of it you do get um, you get some stuff with the parents and you you get that and stuff. it's i actually think it's done pretty creatively in in with the flashbacks and uh sort of the non-linear narrative of it i kind of like how they do it yeah and they do um, like you know with the box and stuff but like you know again like with these movies they always seem to depict the relationship with the grandma really really well um i mean even for the short little bits that we get in the other one and stuff but like i i like that whole the whole depiction of him with his grandma and stuff like he like he adored his grandma mm -hmm. right and shit like that and it's just you know you you catch that in here yeah i think it's i think it really kind of sticks out so yeah i love that scene with the the dad in the box and mm -hmm. the 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 quick thinking to basically blame it on the porn you know right i thought that was pretty good yeah that was that was smart yeah and oh. and i i actually like i actually like the dad like like that whole scene is so awkward where he's just like dude i was like, like getting mad at his dad <laughs> like, leave me the fuck alone <laughs> is it is it is it like is it hetero porn that he ends up showing his dad or was it actually he, gay he porn? Just, just shows it. the edge of it to where you can't yeah. really see too much right because i feel like that might have been the moment in like real life that his dad may have figured that he was that he's that he was gay yeah right Maybe. because he couldn't hide it at that moment he had to do something like i mean yeah. he wouldn't be looking at hetero porn you would be looking at gay porn obviously but like wow what could you imagine being that father and just finding out that way like in that weird like tonally dark moment like what the fuck you hide like could you imagine being pressured into like and then you're like oh shit it was just that i'm sorry jeff i think that like so I, I feel so bad if i found out that my son was gay by pressuring him into like show basically forcing him to show me his gay porn. <laughs> like we probably could have had a better moment with this except for this is not the moment i wanted or envisioned yeah. so, I, I think this, that um, this guy's this... dad probably wouldn't give a fuck yeah <laughs> but his dad was like, like a generally nice guy though too right like he was always like even the like he was he was a you know a straight up like you know middle class hardworking dude and just mm -hmm. it's crazy like i mean he wasn't a bad guy his mom was a piece of shit but i think that um this one is like the most move movie out of all of them like oh well this, this is to me it, feels it's like a, a it's movie definitely. yeah it's, um, it's more cinematic yeah mo more movie less like biography uh but yeah because they fictionalize that, like even with the even with the relationship with the asian guy like or in the way they do this like i don't remember there ever being a moment in anything that i've ever watched or read or anything where he had someone in the apartment and like the you know there was a dead body on the bed and because like Dahmer stressed that like he would when he killed he cleaned up the mess every single time like he didn't have full-on bodies laying on beds and then bringing someone else and yeah. you know and stuff like he was he was about that like once he once he dismantled the body and, and you know god is you know got his way with it and and uh you know whatever he was going to do with it that would that was I it then he would go on to the, the next one 
So the I thought that was a really- of the account of the guy that actually got him ended up getting him arrested. Um, I know I remember him saying that like the, it smelled really bad, and yeah. there was actually a, a barrel, like a drum that had right. that. Uh, later they found out they'd have body parts in it and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, he was soaking it in the acid. He the the method that he was using when he was a kid and stuff. He just carried that over into what he was doing mm-hmm. with those uh, with those barrels and stuff like that. But yeah. but that was the thing. Like I remember reading. I remember like the interviews and stuff. Like he. I don't remember there wasn't multiple people in an apartment at one time. So that's definitely fictionalized in this story just for the movie aspect of it, for sure. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's not like you're, you're already not getting a full biopic anyway. So you might as well, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, put some type of phantasm into this, but you know, it's, yeah, I don't think, I don't feel like anything is egregious with like the liberties they take. No, Um, no. So I actually, so, well, they're I'm not like, making, cool they're not completely it. making up shit and, you know, just kind of throwing it in there. Like, Oh, well, maybe this happened, like, yeah. you know, and trying to style over stylize it and stuff and, and make it more shocking and stuff. It's not like that. It's not like that at all. Um, I think Jeremy Renner's portrayal of Dahmer is awesome in this though. Like he there's, there's, oh, I love it. I it's think kind it's, of, so yeah, good. it's a little bit more evil though, too, because of what they're depicting in this. Like we get that yeah. huge scene with, you know, the, like, I mean, the darkness of the club scenes, is just brutal dude, but he's, he comes off like he's so dialed in. He's so diabolic in this one. Like he's, he's not as he's awkward, but he's like, it's, you know, there, it's just, you can see in his eyes, like there's an agenda in every scene. Right. You know, like he's yeah. not like fumbling around, like in my friend Dahmer, where he's still not really sure what he actually is. And stuff. he's super awkward and shit, but here he's very focused and he's diabolic and he's, you know, he's, he's on that edge. He's on that ledge, you know, kind of thing. And, I don't know. There's just something. About I actually the think that it's haunting. The, um, it's haunting. The acting, the acting's great all around mm-hmm. in this, but um, the relationship with the one like skinnier black dude who, um, yeah, know, that whole thing is fictionalized. The life that the that, that that whole thing's fictionalized. Actually, I th- I think that 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 it's like a really good, um, you know, uh, acting with that though. I thought that I thought that dude was pretty good. Well, it's an interesting way to portray him too because this movie is so dark and diabolical but like there's like he lets him go in the in the in like in this version of it right like he just walks out kind of yeah him but go. there were definitely instances where people didn't get murdered for sure i mean he, he did not kill his house he, he did not kill every single person that went up in 100 yeah. because you think in two years like there was a lot more people that were up there that definitely walked out of there and stuff but like yeah. i think he had those moments of almost like a moment of clarity right you know, like it, maybe maybe a judgment. Prolapse, yeah, I mean, if you want to call it, <laughs> that's kind of a bad. I, I mean, it. you prolapse. you would like to think that it would be possible for that he wasn't so like sociopathic that like someone could actually like charm him enough to where he would like be like, I don't think I'm going to kill this guy. <laughs> but you got to remember his motivations was was companionship though. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, there had to have been moments where like the longer I keep the living, like, you know, maybe they actually want to stick around. Maybe they want to have an extra beer. Maybe they want to have a beer that's not drugged, you know, kind of thing. Right. Right. Like who knows what he would like, what he actually, maybe they want to watch Exorcist three with me. Right. Hey, hey. Right. But I mean, that was the motivations for the killings because he knew that they were going to leave at some point. So you think maybe some of these people actually gave, yeah, maybe they stayed over and had this like relationship and, you know, they were all laughy, laughing and, and acting all normal. Who knows? Right. Mm-hmm. And some of these people end up leaving at the end of the day who I don't know, but, but it was the companionship though, man. I get it. Well, I mean, I don't yeah. understand that. I wouldn't kill. You know what I mean? I've never. Been also the, the there. fucking, um, brain the drill thing is like ugh. yeah the, the whole zombie thing where he tries to create zombies is like the most like <laughs> it is it's like that's actually probably the most insane thing about Dahmer is that he actually thought that he could create zombies because like let's face it zombies are what they're not fucking real yeah like i mean to be <laughs> fair like the one dude the one the 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 asian kid the 14 year old um Asian kid that he drilled the hole in his head and put the hydrochloric acid in the dude kind of was like a zombie because he's out there in front of the police and those girls and stuff. And yeah, and he don't know what the hell's going on. I still don't understand 
how he didn't die from the acid in his head. He was, I, I know, well, he right? Did the, he like, did I don't get it. Time. Like, he the second time Dahmer put it in. Well, he dies, but like, him. how did he not die the first? Like, this yeah, is some like, serious ass shit that you shouldn't be ingesting in any part of your body, let alone your fucking cranium. Yeah, I, dude, I That's don't know. Apparently, Dahmer did some research. <laughs> that is just my well, yeah, because I mean, he, I mean, like they said, they they talk about in my friend Dahmer, so like he wanted to be a biology major, which kind of made sense because, like, you know, mm -hmm. he was into all that type of shit, but um but yeah i mean <laughs> dude i just oh man the whole idea of creating zombies is so fucking it's funny to me it's funny because it's like ludicrous yeah but it is a little goofy i guess that kind of shows like there was an element of dahmer that was a little bit bad shit but then again maybe he knew deep down that he couldn't do it but he was just trying anyways who cares you know you don't know unless you try right <laughs> so what else is he gonna do with them Oh, mm -hmm. I was actually, I was just reading the Wikipedia on Dahmer real quick. One of the police officers who um, uh, actually went up to the apartment during that time with the the, the Asian kid, um, and then Dahmer showed him, like, the Polaroids of yeah, the yeah. gay stuff, and then he's like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Yeah. He, the police officer later said that it smelled really bad in there. You would fucking think that... <laughs> <laughs> you know police probably know the smell of a decomposing body yeah and they do actually because yeah. i have a buddy his dad was a cop for you know 30 years and he's like you never ever can get that smell out of your mind like if you smelt it once you know exactly what you're smelling the second Ugh. time yeah right because he well i mean he worked undercover narcotics for so many years he worked with like he saw so much death in his life it was crazy but you know like they they worked hell's angels cases where they go into warehouses and just be torsos hanging there with you know no arms no legs and shit right and uh he couldn't go into great crazy detail about it but he told me about this one time and they went into a warehouse and there was like just like pieces of meat hanging on fucking meat hooks man <laughs> it's like and it's fucking rotten dude i'm like oh my god but again you know you're right though you, you you would know that smell you would know that smell like i mean i've i've been in the bush before and come across like a fucking you know a half rotten moose before actually a couple oh, times and it so stinks big. like shit, dude it's like that rotten fucking like flesh you can never you just know what you're smelling so yeah i've smelled a handful of dead things in my life as well and it's pretty disgusting yeah yeah um, but, I mean, but, but that type of smell in an apartment it's just not as a cop you yeah. should be like that's not normal but like he kept, the the neighbor, he kept saying to the neighbor he kept saying to the neighbor like oh my fridge broke and i and a lot of a bunch of my meat went bad and like a rump rose that i left out and stuff like <laughs> yeah, yeah, rump 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 but the thing is you would have to have that shit sitting out for a long time to get to that fucking bad that yeah. where your neighbors that are you know separated by walls and shit are smelling that come on yeah. bro like that's a lot of fucking hefty smell man I just, that's I just, what I mean. Like this guy got away just like strictly because of negligence. Well, oh, yeah, hundred percent. You got to remember, a lot of people again, like his neighbors or minorities, like a lot of people weren't taking it overly. Too that's what I mean. It's just too. negligence. They're like, nah, fuck you guys. Yeah, it's it's, it's so bad. Yeah, it's so bad. <laughs> um, what else is about this one? Um, yeah, I like the flashback stuff. It's the first murder, the hitchhiker one, was good. Um. You know, the I one like Brenner a lot. Okay. I'm What's sorry. That? I was going to say, you know, one part in this movie that always kind of baffled me and who knows? I mean, it's probably a little bit fictionalized. I don't remember this ever being a thing, but like, you know, when he's choking the Asian dude and then he basically, I, I'm assuming he kills him, but then he brings him back. He gives him like CPR. And I mean, I get that from like perspective of controlling, you know, you've got, I've got your life in my hand. Like, like I'm totally controlling mm -hmm. the, the whole situation kind of thing. But do you like you honestly would, do you think that he would do something like that? Like kill someone and then actually bring I them back? I can't remember and, and, and if do that it actually happened or not. I, don't I mean, remember. it's possible. To be I honest, know, I know women do that a lot with their babies. Like that, that what is it called? Munson Children syndrome or something? Yeah, I don't know what that's um, like. That's, that. Yeah, like the, the, there's like a compulsion that like it's a it's a uh, mental disorder where uh, women, you know, will literally suffocate their baby bring it back to life and, and then contact 911 it's like some like it's i think it's called it's like has a really long weird name like when some challenge syndrome or something why why is it that like between men and women like women have so many weird things like that like <laughs> remember, remember remember we were talking about like, canceled 
Yeah, I mean, no, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not fully general. I mean, you just hear these weird things. Like, I know we talked about this once before <laughs> about women and their like rape fantasies. Like, have you ever met a guy before that had like a like a rape fantasy? Um, what, to what, get what, raped or uh, to rape? To get raped, like because I'm talking about like you know these women that have these rape fantasies I mean, of being no, raped, I like they like, fantasize <laughs> about being raped, and I'm like, what I the fuck? That's like, a real thing, dude. That's a real fucking thing. Like, it's a real you know, thing. A guy that would have like a fantasy like that would just like never express it. Where oh, like yeah, I definitely. think <laughs> like women's like desires and fantasies are like mo- less taboo. Like, but like why? But why would any woman? People? Like I mean that that would be the worst thing Dude, there's some, that there's happened some to you as a woman people. to be raped, but they have fantasies of it though. I'm like, what? Like I was so confused when I first it's heard like, this. I was it's like, like a it's like a really rich person that has just like just like was one of those people that they just hit the lottery and they're born to like like the, an ultra wealthy family, like mm. fantasizes about being poor. It's like this it's just like it's a lot of like it's people develop like weird disorders for weird psychological reasons, and I think like Maybe people that have never had like maybe something like it's got to be a product like, of like something that happened in your childhood. It could be yeah, like, it could be like a product of childhood well, trauma. It could be like a product of like just like weird fantasies of people. Nothing. I think I think, I think that a lot of times it's more about just being dominated. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. that's, a safe yeah. space. Right. Um, so it, that, I think it's like a boredom thing in, in a sense. No, like he actually just, uh, he actually jogged an interesting memory, like by saying that when I was in like a high school psychology class, uh, this teacher like very like. But like told us about this time like years ago where like a student came up to her and said he was like he was like freaked out and he didn't know who else to talk to and he was having like weird fantasies of like like raping like his friend and like it it was just like a way that like there was like a conflict going on with him and it's like the way his mind like dealt with the idea of like dominating his friend that he had like a conflict going on with so like people so instead of like just, instead of like beating him up or just being like ah fuck yeah you. like that like, he, like that was like he was like he was projecting just like whatever a consciousness whatever is was like projecting like that as like dominating him because of like a strife they're having that, i think over like a girl i have never once in my life ever thought of raping somebody like i just don't understand like, how <laughs> yeah, that even crosses I someone's mind i can't say that's ever crossed my mind either man like, like, that's what literally i mean, never thought of like, like I like if I were to ever have like a thought like that, I would never fucking tell. I would never tell someone. Right, I honestly yeah. would tell somebody. I'd be like, dude, I fucking fantasize. Like I was having visions of rape. I'd be like, there, I want some fucking help because I don't want to. I mean, that to somebody. I don't know. That's do, terrible. Do, but but technically, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with thinking about that. That's a big difference, right? Like it's. <laughs> It's, well, I don't know about that. Out. I think there's arguments <laughs> against that too, man. Like, Why? I, what, what is honestly, it? Dude, I, what would it, even it, thinking it, about that makes the, me feel really bad. It makes me feel bad yeah, to the person I'm, that I don't even know. I don't even know who this p- victim is going to be. I, I'd feel terrible for that person. That's awful. Well, I, I assume that you would despicable. have a person in thought if you were thinking about I it. I guess right? so. Like, but maybe, maybe it's a generalized. But I think that the, the like, you know, when you're talking about anything it's when you cross the line into actually doing something that's where it's like way worse you know what right, i mean right. like thoughts are just thoughts you know you you like i've had some weird dreams about stuff that i'm not even interested in you know what i mean i so. just find it like so fucking disgusting like i actually knew a girl that got drugged in a club and it was fucked up too like she knew the people that she was going back to the place with like she went there with a couple of her girlfriends and a couple mm-hmm. other dudes and like there was a couple people you know like a bunch of people left the club together and went back to a place anyway she ended up getting drugged there like roofied and she woke up in the next morning and her face was like covered in cum like uh, has no uh, recollection of anything i'm like oh my god like that's pretty vulgar. i was horrified when yeah. she told i was like oh my god and she's like i don't know like if it was one of them or if other people can like i have no idea what happened like she says she remembers leaving the club and that was it waking up the next day yeah it's oh pretty horrible. God, i'm like oh my god i'm like i'm hurt. like dude you need to go like you know you got to go like did you get raped and she's like no I, I don't think so like she woke up with her clothes on and everything yeah, so I mean, it was crazy like but her face was you know had some love potion on it i just i to me i think that like most of the people who sexual assault or either not doing it like there i think most i think we agree that most people 
um it's not about like the actual sexual aspect it's more about like the control and the domination of I th- I think other so, humans yeah. um but so i, I think, like, think people that do are that. very very a few cases um where people are just so sexually frustrated because they have like no game at all <laughs> you know what i mean that force um, it upon somebody yeah yeah like i think of that stephen mcdaniels dude you guys know him no no he was that guy that Uh, it's like one of the craziest stories ever but he basically broke into his neighbor's apartment who he was like crushing on forever and creep and she she even felt creeped out by him yeah um but he's he killed her and the next day like he's helping people look for her and he's interviewed on the news and there's actually like you watch these clips where on the news he's like yeah she was just like the sweetest person ever we don't know where she is and like hopefully she returns soon and stuff and then the the news person is like so like i know they took a body out of here recently and he's like body (laughs) and they're like yeah we don't know if it's her but there was a body they removed from the dumpster and he's like his face just goes completely blank and he's just like I, I think I need to sit down. <laughs> wow. So he literally got like, like it's one of the craziest clips ever. Cause it's, you see the exact moment. The guy knows he's fucked. What's, the, wow. what's his name? But Steven like, did he McDaniels. not think, did he not think that right. like someone's going to check the dumpster? Isn't that so just point a here's for the an interesting investigation? thing about that? He <laughs> dismembered the body and put it in different dumpsters. Right. That particular dumpster, the garbage truck was late that, that day. That's why. Oh, I've heard about this. I I think I know this story actually. Now, now that that you're explaining that, it's crazy. Man, I actually had a very similar like when I first moved down to Vancouver to go to school. This is like back in 2000, and like I didn't have cable. I was you know piss poor student shit. So I just had like literally I had rabbit ears, you know, and I would just like I get like the three channels that or two channels that you get off the the fucking rabbit ears kind of thing. And uh, one of the channels, unfortunately, was, and this is to this day, the reason why I don't watch the news was the fucking news channel. Because it's so fucking depressing, man. Like when you move to a big city, like the only thing that they fucking report is dark shit that you don't want to fucking hear all day. Like it's Dude, awful. I've never, yeah. I can't, I, I actively despise watching the news oh my god dude so i I can't watch it bro i've never watched the news when i first on purpose when i first started going to school my schedule was like 11 to 5 so i'd be in school for the or fourth whatever it was but anyways i'd come home and i'd be cooking to turn on tv because i wanted something you know whatever and the news would be on anyways i'd only been down there for like a week and there was this particular case of this girl in um around where i used to be all the time in maple ridge she was abducted and they didn't know what the fuck happened to her. Like she was just abducted and there. So there are, you know, a bunch of people on the news are like, yeah, we're all looking for, her. they got the neighbor out there. He's on the news. He's all looking for her and shit like that. And this thing went on for probably a good 10 days. It was like the big thing. It was on the news every single day. And they're like, Kate, hey, well, we got, you know, some person said they saw this and blah. And it was like this big case. And you're like, okay. And like, y- y- you wanted hope, you know, like I kept thinking to myself going, I hope they find her alive. Cause I, I hate these stories. But you know the fucking just to make a long story short man the thing that pissed me off and this is it devastated me man the fucking neighbor that was on being interviewed was the dude that abducted her and raped her and threw her into a fucking lake that i used to fish in that's pretty i was so horrified because this guy's on the news he's literally the next door neighbor and he's on the news going yeah i'm helping the family and they had all these people out there they're combing the areas the woods all this type of shit and i was like i don't know about a week later they found her body in the lake and i'm like oh my god i'm like I've camped at that lake before. I mean, it just fucking fucking horrified me, man. I was like, oh my God. Like, but this motherfucker's on the news helping. Like, it's disgusting, mm-hmm. dude. I was so dude, that's like, I, And I couldn't watch the news anymore. I was like, because all the t- the first two weeks was, well, this person got murdered and this person got shot up and this person's... And little did I know, and the crazy fucking thing about this is, so little did I know at this at this exact time when I was in school between like 2000, 2002, the Robert Pickton story was happening. The serial killer who killed all the prostitutes, like the 40 or 50 prostitutes in Vancouver and fed them to his pigs. They made a movie called Pig Killer about it and stuff. It's a fucking super famous case in Canada here. Mm-hmm. And but that whole thing was going on while I was living there. And so that his farm, like where it was, like we used to pass by there, you know, every so often going out to Alder Grove and stuff. And it's just crazy to think that, like, I passed that farm 
when that shit was happening. Like, it gives me the fucking chills, dude. Like, this guy killed so many prostitutes. Do you, do you, do, like, nuts. Just nuts. I told the story of the of my friend's dad who murdered his girlfriend or whatever right, um, right. recently. Uh, there's another dude. I went to high school with him. Um, his name was Paul Banish. And uh, he, um, I remember, like, partying with him, like, and, and shit. He was, like, mad cool. And uh, a couple years ago, he got arrested. Um, him and his, I like looked into the case because I was interested. But him and this other dude were like drinking at a bar with like this chick. The, this older, she was like an older woman too, like like a lot older, like double the age of of him. And um, they left together. They basically raped her on the train tracks, killed her, and threw her body in the river, and then went back to the bar and was like making jokes about like oh like you know she went home or something like you know and they got caught and fucking like, th- like that night yeah like that night he they were they were like someone else in the bar was like oh where's sandy or whatever i don't know the woman's real name or whatever but mm-hmm. um they were like joking about like oh we took her home or something like just <laughs> weird shit bro and i couldn't believe it when i was reading this i was like that damn that's like this dude that i was like drink like it's crazy to think like i I was thinking of one night in particular where i was like drinking beers at my at my buddy's house with this guy and i'm like you know i'm like 16 years old or something i'm like thinking like wow like in that moment like who would have known that like 10 years later this guy would rape and murder someone and i'm just sitting here having beers with him so yeah so like what like like but why? I don't like, know. Like that's the craziest thing. Like this guy, like, <laughs> like was he living a pretty normal life, and all of a sudden he's just like, "Hey, I need I to mean, rape and murder just, somebody." Like, like, I mean, I didn't know. I mean, I didn't, I haven't lost touch with him like forever. You know, yeah. I feel like happened, with people but, like that, just like a progression of things. Like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he wasn't like the 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 like he wasn't like a squeaky clean dude or anything. Like he parted. Yeah, I I, I I figured he wasn't. But um, it's just it's nuts to know that I knew like multiple people who have murdered people. Yeah, that's crazy. yeah. I I, I, I only know I've, one person. I don't think I've ever met somebody for real that killed somebody. I don't. I know. drove cross country with one and spent like a week with one when I was like nineteen wow. years old. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember, but I was like, I th- I think there's like a there's a write up in the film or whatever of Dahmer. Um, he got convicted of 15 of the 17 murders. What what two were not part of his conviction? Probably the first one. No, I think that one's I think he did get convicted of that one. I think that's one of them. But I could be wrong. It could yeah. just be like an evidence thing. Like we don't have evidence to convict on this. Oh, one. Of course, okay. of course. We like he 15. fully said 17 people, but he got convicted of 50. It's just like the Picton thing. Like he yeah. killed about 48 or 49 or uh, like up to 50, but he only got convicted of like 20 because they can only find DNA because they comb that because he fed all the bodies to the pigs, right? Yeah. You can't just say like, oh, I killed this many people. And we're like, all right. Yeah. So they found DNA from like 24 of the um, women one on of them his, yeah. was a dude that he murdered in a hotel in milwaukee but he couldn't remember the details of it so oh that's the one where he got all evidence. shit that's the one he got all shit faced and fucking beat the guy's chest yeah that he figures that happened anyways because yeah because like they woke up in the morning and he was like bro bro and then he was like holy fuck he's yeah that's right that's actually one of them that's in the uh, uh yeah the that's right they, yeah and he fucking takes the he takes the um the body out in a suitcase yeah that's right that's right yeah because that one yeah that's right i didn't realize that was one of them but uh yeah he um distinctly talks about the fact that he doesn't remember that at all so <laughs> you drink your problem man yeah crazy so i don't know what okay so what do you got any any other thoughts on Dahmer? um no, I mean, I like I like this movie. Like I said, uh, I mean, it's uh, it's just it's a little bit different. It doesn't give you everything, but it gives you enough of anecdotes of of certain things. Renner's it's this is a really dark movie, like in tone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I find like it's very it's creepy. It's a darker version of like the Dom the it's Dahmer depressing. character. Yeah, they really don't try to overly like humanize him in this one. It's it's pretty it's pretty diabolical. It's pretty straight. 
or to the point of what he's trying to do. Um, it's a little bit more fic- fictionalized, but you know, that's fine. I mean, we still know yeah. the, the, the ins and outs of Dahmer anyways, but like I said, it still gives you a lot of, uh, of the little bits and pieces of what made him take and shit like that, which is pretty cool. But Renner kind of steals the show in this, like he's really good. Um, you can just see it in his eyes though, too, man. But it's crazy. Like when he puts on the glasses, how much it changes the appearance. It's crazy, dude. It's like, I he, also feel like he kind of, he kind of nails that accent too. Yeah the mid sort of midwest accent you know yeah he did a good job with the accent that was something i noticed like right away mm-hmm. yeah um but yeah i like the fact that they showed uh some of the factory stuff in here um yeah doesn't this doesn't get documented and, and, as much. and like the club scenes were cool yeah like that, that whole club thing man is probably like that's like that's i feel like that's Dahmer so out of control like so yeah. fucking out of control like with the alcohol just what he was doing and shit like dude like come on man yeah like he's in like a drunken stupor of like just lust and craziness he's like living in an alternate reality at that point right it's just drugs and alcohol yeah. and just like just rape and just like to the point where you know like it's so crazy to see that scene where he's just stumbling around in the crowd and or in the in the club and you know he's trying to put the roofie or the drugs in the in the beer and like everyone's watching him do it yeah because he's, he's he'd like done it so many times like he had an mo where he'd go to the bathroom crush up the pill you know yeah. what i mean and then he just like too sort of was just like out of it you know yeah way too comfortable in that situation right and <laughs> yeah you end up paying the price but yeah i, I kind of like that build up too because like how we get the whole montage is like you know he picks up this uh this dude at a sporting goods store and stuff and then buddy's like hey man so they leave together and they're walking down the street and and buddy's like hey i need to go into this club here and he didn't want to go in and but he owes me money why. yeah buddy owes me money and then he and then it it takes you into this kind of like almost like this nightmare reality it's a like big flashback of you know what he was doing in this club and it it goes on for a while like it's a long mm-hmm. fucking scene of like to just straight to private depriety and like it's crazy yeah. man and like and then he comes out and then they leave together and then then we get you know the whole scene in the apartment with those two guys and stuff and then it flashes back to like it keeps flashing back to there and you know his childhood and stuff and or leading up to his first kill and stuff which is funny because like it's interesting too like how it's depicted in the first the secret life and to this one it's like totally different it's like totally different you know just ways of depicting it and then my secret Dahmer, like or my secret Dahmer, my uh my friend Dahmer, it, it, it they did it kind of artsy like it's it's just insinuated at the end of that film right mm-hmm. i don't know like anyways we'll, we'll we'll get into that but um no th- this is good man it, it's dark man it's a really really fucking dark film i i enjoyed this one it's good mm-hmm. I, I felt like this was pretty similar to my friend Dahmer in the way that it was like this one was more so that i actually would have like kind of found this one as like the more artsy one this one kind of found more like well, well that's what one, i said i said yeah. it, just the construction of it like the way that the way the narrative is told back and forth and stuff but it's also the performances and just the way you yeah, know it just it seemed like a lot of the story was told like through like just like conversations and like mm-hmm. it, it was more like a like, like a vibe piece to me is like i like to call these movies yeah. well there's actual like yeah there film. actually is a lot of vibe to this film there's like, a lot of just atmosphere yeah there's yeah. a lot of filmmaking in this too like the, you know the tension with you know when he's hugging them and stuff like that and he's looking at you know the the asian dude on the bed and stuff like that right you mm-hmm. know like it, it builds that kind of tension and stuff like is he gonna see it like what's gonna happen here and stuff like that which is you know again i'm I'm fine with the fictional it's like i, I don't remember yeah. any of that really happening but like you know it's fine it's fine it's still a film it's still a film and that's what i always say about like biopics and, and you know you can do them one way you can do them another way and stuff you can still mm-hmm. fictionalize us you know if you're trying to throw some entertainment value into it but that's the thing with these type of movies you still have to have it entertaining that's my biggest mm-hmm. problem with the the black christmas um fucking me too movie man is like that's not a goddamn movie it's a propaganda film for the hate of men it's not a movie dude it's so fucking horribly done it's just pathetic like if you're gonna it's not it's just so that was one of the most disappointing things I've it's ever seen. not how you make a movie that you want to show commentary in it you want to show social commentary hide it a little bit be you know be smart about it you know write the movie smart don't just wear it out on your sleeve and just like cram it down everyone's fucking throat yeah, and then like you lose all the comfort. entertainment. You, well, whatever. <laughs> there's, there's a lot more in that shit, though, man. I mean, yeah, okay. It's obviously simulating fucking Vietnam. Which I, I like it, man. Hey, man, I brought up fucking Tony's rating because of the trees coming down. That was that was the bombs. 
that was the uh, you know that that literally is what is simulating man it's like the trauma that people went through but anyways um but you know what i mean though you know what i'm saying like yeah yeah i feel you i i think what, what for me like i'm okay with taking liberties because i watch a documentary if i want just facts yeah right? that's exactly if i'm watching a movie it's okay to take some liberties now if you're doing something that's completely like outside of like the realm of what happened that it's like offensive then you know i don't yeah, i think that. i think you can't make it too fantastical you know what i mean yeah. like you, you unless can take, unless you're take doing liberties. like unless you're literally doing like uh not quite hot or not uh once upon a time in hollywood where it's literally just like in well it's a what the, if story yeah it's like a what if story type it thing is. yeah yeah um but yeah i agree with you yeah i, I yeah it, it's it's you know i honestly i think the last time i watched it was probably before 2002 but i really enjoyed this one again too um yeah i'm, I'm not really too make sure. your top 10. I, i'm actually quite surprised too now when i really think about it because you know like going back to the old 1993 thing it was funny we were having this huge argument about like 19 oh well, the reason why that got brought up is because when we do our top 10 shows if you win the you know the picking the number one films and stuff you can actually get rid of a year so it doesn't and dave z wanted to get rid of 1993 i'm like bro no I love 19 like 1993 has a lot of films that I per se like he, there's a lot of films there like it wouldn't be a good year for Dave Z it wouldn't there, there's a lot of shot on video stuff that I really enjoy like so actually some of my favorites are actually around that per time period too and stuff but there's a lot of films I really enjoy but he wanted to get rid of it and I was like bro no no fucking way no fucking way and like <laughs> well, this is a great example of a film. This, this film's from so he got rid of Tyler's year instead <laughs> yeah so like 1993 like this movie falls in 1993 I don't know if it'd make my top 10 I'd have to you know do the full prep and stuff but but yeah, I don't remember 2002. What was even on my list? It's crazy. Like, I remember why it didn't. Was on your list. Um, I mean, you had yours was very Asian heavy. Um, oh, Happiness, the Catacurus, Phone, Juan, The Eye, 28 Days Later, Dog Soldiers, Cabin Fever, Irreversible, Frailty, and May. Right. Oh, that's right. Frailty should be 2001. Now, yeah. Right, because that date changed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that is pretty Asian heavy, actually. Oh wow, crazy. Well, that's yeah, pretty like good. Your first like four films were like asian films <laughs> wow yeah i mean but that was that i don't know dog back. soldiers has kind of dropped for me so i could see if any film was like pulled off my list i think it would be dog soldiers now yeah again you know like going back to doing prep on shows and stuff like and and, and, and again lists are always changing obviously because of taste but it's also changing because the way we do our compatibility for our top 10 list is by imdb's uh mm -hmm. the year that it's stated on there because it's usually like the you know it's the um uh the earliest showing but yeah. those things seem to be changing so often like going back to 1993 i was looking up films from 93 <laughs> and i noticed that leprechaun is not 1993 anymore it's 1992 so that recently changed and i noticed a bunch of movies that have changed years and i'm like holy fuck i feel I mean, like uh leprechaun will probably change back maybe one day so what's like i it i don't know what is why it's 92. well apparently the, i tried to look it up a little bit so um i think that it the i from what i see is the director's hometown is where it's listed as is the as the 92 date so the only thing i could think is it was screened at his hometown or something yeah. um so maybe that but i feel like there needs to be like i i hope that there's like that, that they vet this stuff right like they go and look like oh was this actually shown somewhere like there needs to be some kind of proof um yeah but because imdb is kind of like wikipedia right where you, if, if you're a user you can it's go a, and it's, so. it is but it's more like there's more there's more checks than in wikipedia where wikipedia is like well, entirely user-based yeah it's so funny too because like a lot of people use that for like information right it should be more fact checked information that should yeah. be allowed on there they should screen a little bit of that shit. but um so uh my 2002 list like even even looking back at it like i'm pretty happy with that 2002 list that i think the only film that could possibly come off it would be dog soldiers now hmm. which at the time was my number eight dog soldiers yeah yeah i mean huge on dog soldiers i don't think it's one of those films that like gets worse every time i watch it i just i feel like i'm kind of maybe in the same 
with it. I don't know. I was the only person that had Malefique. Well, remember, because I, I didn't get to see it. Dave's uh, sent me the movie after the fact, uh, and yeah. I didn't get it till after. And yeah, and you even said it would probably would have made my list. I think so. But yeah, the happiness of Katakuris, man, that's fucking that movie is batshit, man. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> oh yeah, phones you want. I could, do you want me to live the eye? That's crazy, man. What a fucking list. So what was the May? So we had four different number ones that year also. Mm-hmm. That's right. Well, we only had four people that time. Yeah, because like Brandon had more. Yeah, Brandon's number one was Inner Senses, and that was one that uh I didn't get a chance to see. I don't think because I didn't have access to it or something like that. Yeah, I don't I don't think I saw that one. I, I don't even think I knew about that one. <laughs> I don't think it was probably listed in horror as like my see back then we didn't really do like as much research. This was only our second ever retro top ten. Yeah. Our first one was uh, I feel like Letterbox just makes it so insanely easy. Oh it, it does too. Yeah, Letterbox didn't exist back then, or at least we didn't have it. Um but man, yeah, that was, that was a fun year. Dave's list was crazy heavy, Asian heavy, man. Juan was his number one. He had the ring at number three, which I'm not really the biggest fan of that. Um, but he had Dark Water on there, which I'm surprised now looking at my list. I didn't have Dark Water on there. It's crazy because I actually love that movie. I'm um, surprised you had phone, but didn't have Dark Water. Yeah. And he had phone and the eye. Wow. He like, wow, it's crazy. And uh, yeah, that's it. So um, interesting. I, I don't know how dark water didn't make my time that's crazy now looking at this interesting hmm it's definitely a lot better than the jennifer Connelly remake I'll tell you that one <laughs> but uh it yeah. is <laughs> yeah best thing about that movie is jennifer Connelly. jennifer Connelly. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, um so who's up for dahmer who started was it i started so i guess it'd be tyler tyler yeah yeah, yeah so yeah, I, I like this more than the last one. I don't really mind if it only shows a section of it really takes liberties. I'm like the same way. If I want like straight facts, I'll watch a documentary. But this is pretty solid. Um, not amazing, but it's pretty good. I'll go to six and a half. All right. Moods. Um, yeah, I'm kind of torn on how I rate this one um, for myself. I don't even know why I'd be torn to be honest, because like I always say ratings are for dummies anyways, but, uh, um, just the fact that like, I, if I'm going to give secret life eight, I mean, I, I really enjoy that one. I, you know what? I'm going to come in at eight out of 10 on Dahmer also just for completely different reasons. It's a totally different type of film. It's higher budget. It's done. The construction is completely different, but I like them about the same, um, in retrospect, really. So it's solid. It's solid. I think the cover does it justice for what the film is. It just looks, it just looks dark, mm -hmm. you know, it just looks diabolical too. And that's kind of what you get in this. The montage mm -hmm. is brutal. It's fucking brutal, man. Yep. Um, all right. So I'm actually a massive fan of this movie. Um, it's one of my favorite movies, probably like is in terms of going like up? top couple, top couple, 100 or 150 movies or something would probably make the list um i uh i loved it in 2002 it actually was my number four that year um and i gave it a nine out of ten and i'm sticking with that you know looking back at your list dude i am shocked that the ring is so high i don't know why i, I just the ring i just i like the ring a lot too honestly do you like the american you like the american ring better than i actually i, I, actually I like the american the, version yeah. way more I actually do. I'm also so prefer the American version. That's always kind of been, I thought was a hot take. Yeah. I feel yeah. like that is a hot take. You both are kind of in that hot take. Well, you also saying you prefer, you're not saying it's better. Are you saying it's I think better? it's better. Okay. I think it's well, better. Then that's the hot no, take. I, I think, if you're saying something's better, that's the hot take. If you're saying I prefer something, <laughs> that's just, that's just what you like. It's not a hot take because what you like isn't a hot take unless yeah. you're saying it's better. Honestly, dude, I, think, I, I don't think the gap is like that huge though. But the thing about the Amira is like, I like Naomi Watts. Like I kind of like, I think it's like, I like the look of the film. Yeah. I it's think like it's made blue. pretty well. Um, I, what's his name? Like the guy that kills himself in the bathtub. Um, he played Hannibal Lecter in Manhunter. I love that guy too. Um, so it's just like, there's just so many things going for it. And mm -hmm. like, it also like um, came out at like the perfect time for me. For me, like the big thing is the original ring doesn't scare me. The remake does. <laughs> so yeah, I, I that's like a, that too. <laughs> a big 
reason why I think it's better. I you scared know, the shit out of me when I was like 11. Yeah, I, me too. <laughs> 28 days later, I think was on everyone's list too. It was the one common film that year. That, um, so we're getting the third. I one. watched that fairly recently, and uh, I I think that movie is fucking awesome. Yeah, I I'm I'm curious to see what the new one's going to be like. What is it? Twenty eight years later, I think. Uh, yep. yeah, they skipped months and went to years, which I'm not happy about. No, what was it? Oh, they twenty eight weeks later. Yeah, right. They didn't do months. Crazy. Yeah, but yeah, that one was the the common one on all of our lists. Well, there might have been Matherus too. Oh, well, Frailty, I think it's on all four lists. Um, the oh. Irreversal make all four? And no. Dave's uh, I, May, it. I think, is on May is on all four lists. May, Cabin Fever. Frailty. Interesting. I don't know why we're in. Yeah, so that was a pretty the, honestly, that was a pretty uh same heavy year. Like <laughs> like a yeah. lot of film shared. Right. Did anybody have in my skin on their list? uh in no 2002 yeah that's one there's like two movies i've like two movies this year that like i've been like high in my horror radar for a long time that's i never saw them. that when i did the prep for this but i've seen it since though dude my you skin? crazy moods about this hmm. i have the most unique list out of all of us yeah that's interesting well, i have you got signs. Fake, which nobody has yeah. signs which nobody has and uh Dahmer, which nobody has right <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm actually yeah it's right because you're a, you're a big fan of signs i'm actually not a really big fan of that movie to be honest but um so i like yeah, it that, that, that would I, I, I think like it. i think it did it held up when i, I saw that i saw recently. that one in the theater i saw the ring in in theater too actually so yeah i gave Dahmer nine let's go into the last one yeah okay yeah so that's gonna be uh Dahmer from 2002. Dahmer all right so moving into the third and final film here on episode 254 uh we're gonna take it back to 2017 which I can't even believe this movie came out in 2017 because it just seems like it came out yesterday it's so weird to me I was tripping out man I was doing my show I was writing on my show notes and I was like 2017 I thought it, I was thinking like 2020 and I was way off, dude. I, I, mean, I think it was eligible for 18 when we did our 18 show, but nevertheless, man, that's still older than I still thought it was. But uh, and we got uh, my friend Dahmer. So which is uh, actually based on a comic book from Darf, the, char the character Darf. Um, he actually was Jeffrey Dahmer's friend and wrote made the comic book in okay. the nineties. Well, that's cool because, because then, uh, maybe awesome. a lot of this stuff is maybe not overly fictionalized. Cause actually a lot of, a lot most of, of it is not. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of like, you know, if you know, like the biographies and all the shit that came out, like a lot of this stuff wasn't, this information wasn't really available. I think until well, because recently. this is literally the account of Darf, right? Right. So like, this is, this is his account of who Jeffrey Dahmer was and um you know who he was to him there there were some things that was uh changed for the movie like um i did look into this a little bit uh like the scene where he does the the he cuts up the fish darf yeah. was not actually there that day but had heard about it happening from the other friends right right yeah because he's there and yeah because he's there at the mall too for that scene in the film but he's not or the other guy that apologizes to him at the um mm -hmm. at the at the prom wasn't there which is like a weird scene because mm -hmm. like fuck you'd you apologize if you weren't i don't know whatever um but yeah so basically this this story of dahmer is just uh it's kind of like it's set basically in the same year leading up to uh his first murder and this is like his account with you know his you know his parents and having friends and and uh it, it gives you really a, a visual breakdown of what made him tick essentially so mm -hmm. pretty cool it, it, it's it's interesting to to make a whole film just building up to one thing um i think that i think my major problem with this film when i first saw it was the fact that like they kind of got a little bit artsy with the film and you know again if you didn't know the story 
Which but, nobody, none of us really did know this part of the story, really. No, no, no. I meant, yeah. the, I, meant the, I meant the end of the movie because it's insinuated when he picks up the hitchhiker that he, you know, that he goes back. Like, we know that he kills him. Mm -hmm. I actually I love how yeah. that's for, I, but I mean if, if you're too. watching this film as somebody that uh I, I think they do stay in they I, I think they do state in the in the comments that like the, yeah they have a they have a post like a, yeah there's a, a yeah there's movie. yeah they do say that you know he picked him up and he was never saw he's never seen again kind of thing but yeah um but I guess which helps whatever but uh but what are you guys overall thoughts on my friend because Tyler, you weren't like the hugest fan of this movie when it came out, right? Yeah, I actually had a similar experience to you there where I went in the first time and I think I was looking for some like I don't I don't want to say exploitation movie or something, but I thought I was like Well, you know Jeffrey Dahmer and you know like the heinous things he did. And I actually agree with what you just said, both of you. Like when I first seen it, the reason I wasn't and I did I, I didn't not like it, but I just was like, Well, that was kind of tame. But yeah, I was like once you know that and you can like look at it from what it actually is which is just like sort of an origins of this person yeah yeah it works a lot better yeah well, it um, does I, if you, if you like can accept the fact this time yeah th that's the thing if you can accept the fact that like he was a person before and that it's really showcasing the ticks right that's all this movie's doing it's telling you what essentially most likely caused him to do what he did you know yeah it's like it's just a different type of movie and i think i just wasn't in the same headspace i was back then i am now this is like a problem like not a problem but like something i noticed even for movies i only watched maybe like three years ago is like i ran into this problem more where like i came in really expecting one thing for a movie and like i didn't like it because i didn't get what i was expecting and like i kind of find i have that problem way less now where I'm more, like i'm just willing to take movies like at face value and understand movies or trying to do different things and I, I just, I think I just engage with the movie like a lot more how I was supposed to this time. And I thought it was actually really cool. I came up a lot on this. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, it's my second watch on it. I liked it the first time. I think I came in at like a six and a half. I was looking at my old rating on it. I'm pretty sure it was six and a half. Like I thought the performance from um, the guy that plays Dahmer in this, I thought was really good ross lynch i think he, plays he was it. very good i remember thinking he, last time too the performances weren't good maybe not him but i remember thinking at least some um, alex wolf was like it was like he was, he's like he's bad in this movie and that's just like not true yeah, yeah. No, he's good too like it I, I i actually forgot that he was in this and i was like that looks like the kid from hereditary and then i was like oh, all, I oh, the alex wolf from, yeah, yeah. all i remember from my first watch was that he was in it and the part with the fish I think I think the craziest thing is like I didn't even catch it the first time I watched this movie until I was like looking up the credits and shit that Anne Heche was fucking Joyce Dahmer in this film. Yep. Like yeah, I didn't even cool. realize until after I finished the film I was like what the fuck crazy I it just didn't even place her didn't even recognize her. So that's kind of one of those weird things but but yeah I mean again if you know bits and pieces of Dahmer's uh, you know childhood and stuff like that. This is really the full depiction of it. I think the movie is a little bit too long, to be honest. Like this one runs almost like 110 minutes. Yeah, I think, I think it is could... a little bit long. Oh, for what it is, that. like, I mean, for what it is, right? I mean, there's a lot of scenes of Dahmer acting a fool, man. Like he's, he was the class, cl I mean, he was doing the shit, you know, to get attention and mm -hmm. basically, you know, conceive friends because like he was awkward. He didn't really have anybody, but he knew if he did some shit that, uh, that people would continue hanging out with him and stuff. So he did that stuff. It's just hard to believe that he was at one time doing all this type of crazy off the wall shit. <laughs> like it just doesn't seem like he should have been, you know, knowing what he became. But I mean, I guess you got to start somewhere, right? But uh, I don't know. I think it's uh, I think it's pretty interesting. I, I, it gives you a, a great visual of, you know, I mean, of a of a person that was that loved, you know, he he loved his family life, right? And it it depleted, you know dad could you imagine coming home from a school trip and then being like oh my dad moved out <laughs> like, yeah I think, like, I think he was like i think but, what and, and i i look kind of looked into the back derf guy um to sort of see like what he actually thought about jeffrey dahmer you know what i mean yeah and like it seems like he just thinks that the dude was like a tortured soul basically and and you know he had a lot of darkness to him um that you know uh, that uh, and a lot of people like i like because his his comic book got super criticized 
uh when it when it came out and stuff like that and he said that like people are objecting to what he became not what he what you know he depicts in his book because he doesn't depict any like sex or or any well, crazy know. shit in his book i don't think he knew he just well well yeah he knew he wrote the books after Dahmer got arrested you know um, what i mean i guess yeah i mean it's just yeah but it's just it, that's not what his that's not what his shit is about his shit right. is it not about that it's about his friendship literally with jeffrey dahmer yeah and yeah. despite like what he became and like how you can condemn it and stuff that does not mean that that friendship did not exist and that 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 you know it happened exactly he's not I trying mean, to like you, you know how sometimes like if you were like knew someone like like you almost distance yourself from it because you're like i don't want people to think that i was friends with this fucking weirdo but he kind of almost like leaned into it and basically was like, yeah, this is what I was friends with him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that doesn't mean yeah. that he supports what he did, you know? No, but, he's, um, he, I mean, he's, he's telling the story from like a non-exploitive kind of way though, too, right? Like, I mean, well, there's, there's we, obviously like valid criticism where people say, are we, um, making these people sympathetic are we are we taking these heinous acts and adding sympathy to them and is that the right thing to do but that's not necessarily i've never watched any of these films have been sympathetic to i i don't take it like that because yeah, in exactly. the long run you know exactly what he did but you're just you're still watching a portrayal of a character that was i mean this was a person before he became what he did Sometimes yeah, I, like people so act it's a like different your main character like isn't allowed to be a bad guy. Yeah. 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 But I mean in this yeah. film he's not he's not per se like he's definitely weird and and he does yeah. awkward things and he's strange like he's just not hopefully your straightforward type of high school kid but I He mean, actually comes off I think that, that, that a lot of problems people have is he comes off very likable. Yeah. In this film. Well, it's because like, they make him a clown and people like clowns. They like people doing crazy weird shit. I mean, him him flopping on the ground acting like you know he's handicapped and stuff is yeah it's offensive but it's it's also just still a joke right i mean but he's also doing it because he wants to be yeah liked. he's like it's very clearly he wants these it's like a cry for attention oh it totally yeah. is but he wants to keep these friends that's what it's yeah. all about it's not about the outside crowd it's about the people that are making yeah. him do this shit. like he wants to keep them as friends and stuff so yeah yeah and and um that even like the scene where he like goes out of his way to make their trip like great you know yeah. what i mean like with the with the pre vice president did that really happen did he actually meet the vice president Jason? i yeah, i don't recall that being a thing but i mean it's did it i feel like it, it probably happen. happened if it if it was in if it's part of this story because yeah, I, I probably did why the hell would you just make that seems like something weird to kind of like yeah that seems <laughs> so out of left field right to throw into the film like hey we met the fucking vice but like no what really <laughs> like, yeah you know, fictionalize something that outrageous but like i mean who knows it could have i That's think pretty the, interesting i still though. think the funniest shit, if this really did happen with the yearbook stuff i think that idea of I throwing that did happen actually all the pictures is the funniest shit, dude i that's what i thought was the best <laughs> part about the whole movie was they came up with this idea to like make jeff I, I, because they already had the the jeffrey dahmer fan club right and like they kind of <laughs> treat him like this he was this big star so like let's make him larger than life by putting him in every picture in the year <laughs> it's a fucking great idea man oh man this is so good well i guess it was actually dahmer's idea though right but um but it's it's just it's just a funny ass idea but then it totally gets shut down and shit like that but yeah i don't know i i, I think that's pretty brilliant so but yeah the, oh, the, not only did it actually happen but the the actual like the teacher like markering it out actually happened too personally <laughs> they actually is is that how the yearbook is it's just like yeah big so black, it's like big a black dog. So funny. Yep. I bet you there's pictures online of it. There's there got to be pictures. It has to be. Yeah. Oh, it's I'm funny, looking. dude. That's like eerie. Like that is the eerie. Way, with, with the way things turned out. Uh huh. Right. It's interesting. <laughs> wow, that's something else. 
Yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of glad that they didn't play up the angle of like you know him kind of semi being bullied and stuff like that, and like you know people just thinking he was overly weird and shit, like because it wasn't really like that wasn't I don't think a huge factor in in, in of what he became you know i think it was more about the family stuff and just it was the companionship and stuff like that so it wasn't mm -hmm. necessarily they didn't really f have to focus too much on the bullying i think they kind of got that in the story which is a, i think a really good element of the story <clears throat> um but yeah I, this movie to me um i, I think it's more so like a drama <laughs> than it like is. a horror film it's, it's a straight drama yeah. Yeah. But, I felt like um, both of the uh, it's both, almost uh, in a sick way, it's a coming of age story. It is. Yeah. That's Kinda. cool though. That's that's interesting. It's it feels um, like you're watching like, you know, like the minor league season of like that like someone that will be like an all star serial killer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I like I like how they depict his compulsion. Um, I love that scene where they um like the like the dad is like dude you're fucking weird pretty much you know what i mean because it, it shows like like the sort of like like how his dad wants him to play like a sport and stuff like i, I feel like that stuff's all good um but he did the, like dahmer was interesting in high school because like he did play tennis he he was in the band yeah. like he wasn't completely like this full introverted like no friend type person like he obviously had well, some clearly. friends but, I mean, <laughs> you know like i mean he did weird shit when he was at home like i mean there's there's a great scene in the film where the dad has just had enough because he's spending all all his time and i call what i call like the kill hut because <laughs> he's like basically pickling animals out there <laughs> and his gross. dad like his dad like fucking you know goes out there and you're like you're spending too much time and you start smashing all the shit and jeffrey's he's just like totally devastated because all of his hard work is in now in the garbage and shit like that but yeah you know as a father man like it's a powerful scene because like you know you know that shit's a little bit weird maybe not you're not thinking in your mind like hey my kids you know killing animals and gonna be a serial killer you're not really at that point in your life but but yeah, but you would definitely have something in the back of your head where like you yeah know, you would i, I kind of don't want my kid to be a fucking weirdo yeah exactly yeah. that's um, why you kind of you want to put a kibosh on that shit <laughs> like try, hey go, yeah. go play some fucking tennis man you know you know go be the, the next john mcenroe you know play some band but it, I, I still think it's really funny that he was in band though i don't know why i just it's <laughs> yeah i don't know why it's just funny to me but um it's kind of crazy like if you look at his um his uh like high school photos the guy the guy that plays him in this movie was like very looks very similar bro yeah yeah <laughs> there's good casting on that um but uh yeah I, I i i i do like how this one ends actually though i i think that it like it the fact not showing it it i think works because it's like this is this story and and we're about to go into a separate story it's like it's two different sections of his life well yeah murder I mean, and post murder you, you could literally make a sequel to this movie and it'd just be the you know the 19 you know 82 to like 88 and then you could do yeah. like 99 like you could do this in three different movies right there's like three mm -hmm. kind of steps like there's that whole era where you live with his grandma between 82 after you come back from the you know the you know the, yeah the military the, army, the military and then and then when he gets kicked out of his grandma's house in like 87 and then 88 when he gets into his apartment and you know that's kind of where like the Dahmer story is like he's mm -hmm. starts out like he's in the apartment right and that's you know that huge rain like you really could do this in three stories but that's what makes my secret life so interesting is that it covers the whole thing and, and it covers a lot of the elements like in a, in like 100 minutes it's crazy yeah so. i also just like the look of this film like if it, it like i like the 70s like it yeah. it's uh it's i don't know it, I, I like this movie yeah I think there was some, there's some cool sh there's some cool shit i like the fact that the kids were in the national lampoon shirt because like national lampoon yep. started out as a magazine right like it was i think uh -huh. 1970 or 71 is when it did i can't it was like 70 it was early 70s but i, I always like that I, I those little anecdotes and shit and in, in films i always notice stuff like that so but pretty cool I felt like he depicted the like just like kids well in this movie. Yeah, Ex especially like kids in the seventies. Yeah, like these like all felt like real kids. Yeah, I feel like you can just see the pain in every scene because like he like you know 
the beginning of the film when his parents are like semi semi happy and stuff and he's not coming from a broken home and stuff he's his demeanor is a little bit better it's a little bit more forward i guess um but then like when shit starts falling apart like you can just see the pain in his face when his dad tells him that he moved out when he was on that school trip and stuff and then everything just spirals out of control right from that point i think that's like a major major point in his life right was finding out that his dad's out and you know the mom's fucking taking the brother and stuff and and that's one thing that you you see in this but you don't really see in the other films at all is like talking about like he had a sibling right like there's someone else there that never really gets brought up a lot i don't remember like do they do they bring up the brother in the netflix series much i, I don't remember i honestly don't remember i feel like they don't yeah i feel like they don't but have him. Maybe, maybe he has to be not part of the story who knows Right. Dude, Dude, I, I, guarantee, I guarantee that guy is avoided this story forever bro. well apparently he's like like i read up on him like apparently he's super normal he's married with kids and just has a profession he's just a normal fucking person so Dude, yeah I would... yeah i changed my name yeah bro like i would like dude <laughs> because yeah because Dahmer doesn't seem like an overly popular last name like if you were walking around and your last name was Dahmer, yeah, you'd be like oh like, shit like any relation it's so heavily associated with one person that like there's yeah. someone like one in at least like 15 20 people you know is gonna google you because of that right it's like if you had the last name hitler i you, you'd probably <laughs> change that shit bro right i, like, think, I think i think that actually the name hitler is banned in germany <laughs> yeah but like there's got to be other people with the last name hitler in the world right like he can't just not exist anymore yeah i think dude had siblings and and nephews and shit or something like yeah like i mean as long as there's a male carrying on the name and shit like there's got to be some other hitlers out there it's just so fucking dude. crazy i never really oh, thought God. about that till now man. dude but. you know how annoying it would be to be david dahmer like right. you every single person that ever found out your name and found out who you related to would be asking you questions dude yeah. it would never stop it would, it would never, never end, fucking bro. stop yeah yeah that would be that would i totally i would change my last name i would just i would change know, my name oh, to just dude. something like radically foreign yeah right i'd be like sven like hornquist or something <laughs> hornquist uh, but yeah you know overall i mean this th this is a well-made film from a, a perspective of filmmaking like it's shot well it's acted well i think the story is it is what it is i think it depicts his childhood you know very well i mean assuming that's what it is i mean i'm assuming mm -hmm. it is because we got the derf story um so i mean if that's what it is it's uh i think it's done pretty well it really does give you a, a great breakdown of like i always look at the family aspect right i think the family aspect was a huge thing for him and stuff but it you know i mean the ending to me is a little bit artsy you don't need to show the killing we already know that that happens i mean they tell you in the credits though mm -hmm. too right so I felt um, like they were like with that last like cinematography and like whatever they did to like get that get the aperture from the weather it was kind of supposed to be like a drive into darkness yeah like, mm -hmm. or the road into darkness but you can see it like I feel like that moment like I mentioned before with the father they do a good job building up to like what you know is gonna happen yeah, yeah i feel like that moment is like that kind of breaking point and there's this great there's this great scene in the film towards i think also his friends dirt. moving away you know what i mean and well, well dude, just like the changing of I, the guard i think the prom was might have been the ultimate breaking point because he knew at that moment that his friendship with his friends quote unquote was over because they were all going to different places and they was gonna have to start like they left him he has no companionship anymore Oh, and uh, D D uh, Durf actually did go to the University of Pittsburgh. How about that? Hmm. Right. Durf. I always wonder if that scene is true. Like, you know, like where, because he where he's going to kill him. I feel like that was pr probably fictional, but I, I don't know. Like that. I feel like that's fictional, too. I feel like that's totally put there for dramatic reasons and stuff. And it's, it's also to depict the fact that like, hey. I, I think it like, works because whether it happened or not, the fact is that Durf probably thought about that possibility for a long time after he found out who Jeffrey Dahmer was. He probably thought back to all the times they were alone together and stuff like that. Like, right. Damn. Like, was he ever thinking about killing me? Yeah. I mean, it, it's opportunity, right? The, he had no parents there. House was empty. Right. Plus he's leaving. 
right? Like the whole Jeffrey Dahmer's whole MO is not wanting people to leave him. Exactly. Exactly. They break it down. Like it's, it's, it's almost haunting. He might've escaped a, might, might've dodged a bullet there. Who knows? Um, I mean, if that's how it went down or whatever, but, uh, but yeah, I think like, you know, the whole prom thing, which is still the funniest thing. Like I actually laughed again. I forgot that like <laughs> he takes that girl to the prom and he just books out on her, and just fucking ditches her. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the scene though, because he fucking ditches her. And, you know, you think he'd be going out to like in the woods to, you know, do, do some patrolling. I think they do that well too, actually with, with him in the bushes and like just losing his temper and like he's beating trees, with bats and stuff. But I actually really like that kind of build up, but. Anyways, after he ditches her at the prom, they show him in his vehicle and he's just mowing on a cheeseburger and fucking fries. <laughs> that's what he went to. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's, that's interesting. going to be a night. Yeah. Um, I heard from one person I, after watching this uh, when it first came out, they're like, oh man, this fucking movie, it's just like, it's full of, it's got the word fag and homo and blah, blah, blah and this shit in there. I'm like, it was, it really? It I was didn't the, notice. It was the fucking <laughs> 70s. Like, what yeah. it was just normal I'm it was not, normal it was normal verbal i, I don't feel like it i i mean I, I don't remember but i feel like it couldn't have been like excessive no there's a I few feel like i wouldn't notice if it was there, excessive. there's a few times where there's f-bombs and stuff like that but it, i mean it's I'm look at this movie set in 1978 79 kind of thing right and it's like it's just the times man it's how people talked right I mean, yeah. you got to depict the times correctly. I mean, you're not going to like make a seventies movie and not have bell bottoms and, and other fashions and shit, right? Just of the times. Like if you're offended by bell bottoms, it doesn't mean it did, didn't exist in 1979. So I don't know why I use bell bottoms as a, <laughs> a contrast there, but anyways. Um, but yeah, so if I had to rate this movie, I, I came in at like a six and a half before I I'm definitely higher on it. Um, I'm going to come in at a seven out of 10 on this one. I think it's a little bit too long. It's entertaining for what it is. Um, it's not something that I'm generally going to go back to a lot. If I'm going to watch a Dahmer story, it's probably going to be a complete depiction and watch my secret life. I just, I find that one flows so well and I just, I'd like the low budget of it too. Um, nothing to take away the, the Hollywood feeling of this movie. I think it's really, really well done. Um, I gotta say though, like the Anne Hage thing, man, fuck is she, ever, she's like unrecognizable in this movie. It's weird. It's just crazy to me. But, um, yeah, I, I, I give my friend Dahmer seven out of 10. JP. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I'm a pretty big fan of this movie. Um, I liked it a good bit when it came out. Um, and I pretty much, I, I feel like I might like it a little bit more now um because i feel like i the first time watching it i kind of expected like like kills and like you know crazy graphic shit because it's mm. jeffrey Dahmer, and i think i was like a little taken back by the fact that it it wasn't that at all it was like a coming of age drama type thing <laughs> um but now like knowing that i just i just think it's a very interesting movie in it and and since we already mm. have a movie multiple movies that that depict other aspects of Jeffrey Dahmer. It's cool to see this sort of version and learn some stuff about him, uh, early on and in, in a different point, a different like type of, um, view. Uh, I think I gave it an eight back when I first seen it. I'm gonna just stick with that. I think it's still an eight. All right. Um, so the first time I saw this, I was probably around like five, five and a half on it. Um, I definitely like, I like this, this take different, like, like you said, we, there's a bunch of other movies about other aspects of his life. And I, this, this story and the way this is, is kind of, is, is honestly kind of cool. It's a lot different. Um, this one stands out to me most definitely like this one, the best. And yeah, I really? think I'm going to come. Yeah. I think I'm actually going to come to a seven on this one. Hmm. Hmm. You, you know, the one nice. scene in this film, I understand why they did it, but um you know it's the scene with the dog it, it actually had me a little bit confused the first time i watched it. and even this time i think i might have been overthinking it too but like there's a scene where he finds this dog and he's wanting to kill the dog like he's literally got this knife up to the throat and stuff and then he just conscience kicks in and he's like nope fucking get out of here and the, and the dog he doesn't kill the dog so what are your yeah. guys opinions I actually, on that scene? i really is, really is it to like humanize him is it fully to humanize him or is it just because like it was so stressed 
in the beginning of the film too with like he had no problem killing animals like he was killing animals all fucking day like i mean he wasn't just finding roadkill he was killing animals too he was he was you know poaching them off and shit so why why would they show it must just be to humanize them a little bit i mean you could say that but like i think it's kind of just a show of progression i actually really like this scene because like he he's obviously like coming more to terms that he has this urge in him is it a way of just showing that he can fight it off it's a way it's just because like, he wanted it, to right i don't think a it's a, i don't think it's i think it's more of like like I, i'm not quite there yet yeah exactly well, i don't no, think it's, it's more so comes, i i disagree with like, that because like he was killing animals before this too to like what was the problem with the kill? dog well this is like somebody's dog that well, they just came running up to him that's the thing this isn't like some wild animal like this is like someone's dog came running up to him and he has his urge like he wants to do it but there's still a part of him that's like i can't just like kill someone's animal like even in the even in the story like they they go into it a little bit but even from a young age like he was killing animals like you know he would find little animals and he would he would catch them and kill them and stuff like that like that's how it all started it's like right out of his own mouth so i, just, I always thought I that the whole like dog thing was interesting kinda, i thought yeah, they were i think i think a dog like is like way different than like a rabbit though yeah i agree oh, of and course like, this of course. is like this dog had like a collar on it had like nice <laughs> pimp like fur like this isn't like some random wild animal no and the dog yeah. was like so tame and shit i was like oh my god yeah. and when i was first watching this movie i was like he better not kill that fucking dog well dude i mean that goes to show you right there like the way people feel about dogs like i mean even even hard ass jeffrey dahmer right <laughs> who kills everything yeah. has second thoughts about a dog because yeah uh, dude, it is it, it, it's so interesting how humans are with that though, because um, like uh, my like blood pressure goes up whenever I feel like a dog might get killed. Like I'm not yeah. even like, well, and that like, would have been a terrible a movie, scene because you're just like, like they're just so they're so nice and, and this, this movie only works like because you don't like hate Jeffrey. You like you're, you're kind of like trying to look at through like a like a there's there's good and evil on everyone. Left, but you're like, not you know, absolutes. You see. You see, like for somebody that didn't know anything about Jeffrey Dahmer and you're watching this movie, like say if you didn't know what he was and you're watching this movie, he would be kind of likable. Like he you almost feel sorry for him because he's like so yeah. awkward and weird. Right. And that's how it's supposed to be trade because he wasn't necessarily that Unlikable. person. He wasn't. Yeah, he wasn't that pure evilness that he even referred to himself as um, yet. Right. Yeah. No, so he, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. we're not supposed to see him as that Dahmer that we know that killed 17 fucking people and and raped and ass fucked people all day. Like he he wasn't that person yet. Right. So we're supposed to. Yeah. I think that's why I like this the story. character a little bit. Yeah. That's why I like this story the most. I think. I think because it's like a more like interesting like study of the character. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, it's pretty it's pretty interesting. Um, I, I you know I like it, but you know, like I said, you know, I mean it's just it's one story and sometimes i just want to see the whole thing you know but but all three movies are good though it's it's a great double feature or triple feature because feature. yeah because it it, it showcases it, it is like the, the character in works. different lights yeah, yeah it's cool it's yeah. like you get a super cut of the whole thing and then you get like the like this like adult period and then you get like this younger period it's kind of yeah. cool it's cool yeah, that no, people it, are it's, making the same movies yeah and, and like when we picked these i didn't intentionally like do that with like I don't know if you guys did, but I didn't intentionally like think of it that way. Like, oh, let's pick three fairly different Dahmer movies. I think we just have three different decades, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what other Dahmer movies are there besides? Well, we know the Netflix series. I know there's a documentary. There's actually a couple. I think documentaries. there's one other Dahmer movie, I think. Let's find out. So I'm trying to think because I know there's a documentary. There's at least well, there's a bunch of documentaries, actually, to be honest, but there's the TV series and then there's, I know these three movies, but there's another actual like movie movie. I thought there was, maybe there isn't because 90, th there couldn't have been anything. Before. I see a Obviously. bunch of documentaries. Like, yeah, there's, there's a bunch that I know there was a, there was, I remember watching a couple of documentaries, even in the nineties, uh, raising oh. Jeffrey Dahmer. What the fuck is that? 2006. Really? Yeah, and Dahmer. then um the jeffrey dahmer files which is, is like a documentary more yeah, so, yeah documentaries yeah raising raising jeffrey dahmer is like to be core to be core it's like you know like one of those like random you ever you know like the random movies that just get thrown on to be because like somebody <laughs> just put them up there it's one what, of those what movies. what year did that come out in 2006 huh it's got like 119 people watch that and it's like overwhelmingly half star 
It's like somebody made this with like a with a digital camera, like in the right. French, probably. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, okay, so well, we did. Uh, so I guess by, kind of by default, we picked the three that were. Different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense now. <laughs> I'm actually surprised there's not more movie Dahmer movies. Oh God, there's a Bill's Above movie. A movie about the actual director? No, no oh. like a Bill's Above movie dubbed Dumb and Dahmer. Oh God! There's oh. Dahmer versus Gacy. Oh Dahmer! Versus oh Gacy. yeah, the Dahmer versus Gacy. Oh dude, that movie's fucking. It's ridiculous. I actually, it's own that so movie. stupid. Oh, I forgot about that one, man. It's so ridiculous. It's literally them like facing off. It's crazy. <laughs> but I think I remember it being more Gacy-ish. I can't remember. I've I've seen it though. Like, I don't know. Um, but yeah. Anyways, uh. That is uh, Serial Killer Volume Dux, yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, yeah, I don't know if we ever do another. Like, we'll probably end up doing another one, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, we could do Ed Gein. Um, there's a few Ed Gein. Do movies. we have to no. theme it out, or could we do like? Could there be like serial killer movie? Like, I mean, I don't know how many movies yeah, no. are based off the Russian. Like, The Citizen X would be cool to do like you mean like can we do like the golden glove and uh deranged actually yeah, yeah we don't have to do the same guy on, on well that's episode. well ed gein would actually i would like to theme out an ed gein because there, there's there's some pretty different films for ed gein like yeah there's um, at right? least sure, two. there's a lot of different interpretations of the story yeah, so. there's one called ed gein <laughs> but we could do because we did memories of murder that. Oh, it's awful. We've, already, we've already actually reviewed that movie memories of murder mm -hmm. um so even doing like a foreign one would be actually kind of interesting like doing like the citizen x and um, oh, Rillington love, Play, yeah, Rillington yeah like that one like that story and like yeah like kind of do like a foreign serial killer show that's you know not themed well i guess that is the theme foreign serial killers right but <laughs> yeah. um but you know what i mean i mean there's obviously gacy there's there's bundy there's fucking uh there's um manson yeah, there's obviously Manson, there's um Richard Ramirez, like there's tons, man. There's tons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's um, there's a good bit of serial killer movies out there. I mean, even where you want to do foreign ones, we could throw th they just put out the pig killer movie of Robert Picton. Yeah. So that would be fun to do. So yeah, Canadian. Yeah, no, uh, I'm sure we'll get around to doing a uh, volume three eventually. Um, but next week is volume four of zoology yeah which is uh bears we're doing bears bears good old bears we're doing we have an grizzly yeah which is probably the most known oh, killer bear ending. movie the ending just kills me every time it's so funny um prophecy which is like um like taking it out of like <laughs> realism a little bit yeah i've wanted to see this movie a long time i'm excited for this one um and then the third film is actually like sort of a more obscure one and it's called claws from i think it was it 77 something like yeah. that yeah it was like a tv film or something like that i don't even know if it's tv no it's uh is it film no one seen <laughs> basically um claws no idea it's actually on YouTube. Yeah, Claws from 1977. Yeah, because we, I think we saved it all, like, so we didn't lose it. I'm yeah. pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it was a, oh, maybe I'm thinking of something else. I don't know. I thought, I thought for sure it was a um, TV film, but let me, see, let me see. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to look this up. If it's a TV. It doesn't film, say it's a TV movie. I'm it doesn't. Looking. Yeah. Okay. So maybe it's just like low, but whoa, holy shit. It's an hour and it's a hundred minutes. Yeah, for a fucking bear wow. film. Oh, what? Man. Uh, it was re released in 1978 in Canada, Mexico as Grizzly Two. <laughs> <laughs> we actually thought about actually doing the official Grizzly Two movie, but yeah, we went with this oddity instead. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe we'll we'll do two a, minutes too. Jesus, we could do a Bears Volume Two one day. Oh, there's lots. Of, there's lots of bear movies. Yeah, I mean zoology, like the 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 the, the possibilities it's endless, bro. Are it's, literally, the possibilities are endless. It's endless within the themes too. Like you know what yeah. I mean? Like there's tons of ant film. There's there's tons of shit, man. Like oh, these ants, uh, God, fucking dude. don't even start on sharks. Oh my god, oh, man. <laughs> 
You can do an entire season of shark shows. Yeah. So many um, shark movies. I mean, fuck, there's five piranha movies. <laughs> right. There's more. There's five in a series, and then there's other piranha. I think there's like mega piranha and shit. <laughs> yeah, all those later kind of sci fi films. Yeah. Although, because the sci fi originals, there's just there anything like that is just endless because the sci fi originals. Yeah. One I would love to incorporate into a show one time would be Frank and Fish. I know that sounds absolutely I love absurd. Frank and Fish. That movie is actually legit pretty fun. Like, yeah, it's, no, it's good. good. It's it's good. It's like, like one of the better fish. like made for TV sci fi films out there. Like it, they did a good job with that. Like the production mm-hmm. on that is pretty good, man. So yeah, well, it, it also came. I think that's like two that what two thousand three or something. Something like that. Yeah, I, I feel like remember. it's earlier than like post Sharknado era. Yeah, you know what I mean. Where sci fi movies actually like kind of tried to be movies. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah, there was a time when they were legit trying to make movies. Yeah. yeah like and then they, they started trying to make bad movies that's where it all went downhill for me yeah yeah you, when you start making when you're purposely making bad movies no yeah nope um but yeah i'm looking forward to um next week's uh show i like the zoology ones they're fun yeah for sure um yeah so that'll be episode 255 Wow, mm-hmm. 55 and then uh i believe yeah the, the show after that is what is that it's gonna be og versus remake, og right? versus remake been a while since we've done one of those we're doing yeah. carnival of souls yeah that'll be an interesting one which i've actually never seen the original carnival of souls i don't think i've actually seen the remake before and like as far as i, I, I thought i've seen it but like, i don't think i've had because i know wes craven produced that movie right he had something to do with that yeah so I don't yeah. know if I've actually ever seen it before. It, it's very odd, but um, I I'm seen pretty sure it sucks. Times. I can't remember. I mean, dude, I watched it back in like probably like 2000. Well, that's the consensus on it. Pretty much that it's terrible. So but I did. I don't have well, anything to compare it to because I don't even know if it's like similar to the original. You know what I the mean? The original one is pretty good. Yeah. Like I'm talking like story wise. Like I don't even know. You know, sometimes like the remake has like nothing oh, to yeah. do with the original like i don't even yeah. know if it's a similar story or not or it takes yeah. like really like real like really harsh liberties with the story yeah yeah well anyway yeah so that's down. gonna that's gonna conclude uh episode 254 and yeah we're out of here man check you guys next week deuces peace peace <laughs>